calling the meeting to order at 5.58. Um, hello. So let's see. First business is to approve the minutes of April 24, 2023. So moved. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Any corrections? Okay, um, so now I'm doing all votes by roll call, is that right? Yeah, I guess that's right. That's okay, so should I just call us out in alphabetical order? Uh, it doesn't matter. Any okay. way you want to. All right, Jordan. Uh, yay. Gabrielle, yes. <laughs> Jamie. Yes. Anne. Yes. Yes. And oh. Anne. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, you're alphabetically correct. Okay, um, that's that. And then um, the right of way permit issued to Lewis Porter. The select board tentatively approved this application with some conditions at the last meeting. Those conditions are now outlined in the document. And um, has everybody had a chance to look at the new document? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so, can I get a motion to approve the application and to authorize, uh, I think, me to sign the right of way permit? Or are we all signing the right of way permit? It is all of us. So, um, okay. So moved. A second. Second. Okay, that was Jordan and Ann Tulin beat you to the punch, Ann Winchester. <laughs> and um, any discussion? I have a question. Um, so none of the conditions changed from last time? They did change. We added conditions of that Lewis should put it on front porch forum, well, date that, and I think time. I all in there. What? But I mean, it's what change. we said. Last it's what you said. Yes. Oh, yeah. It yeah. didn't change between what last meeting right. and this meeting. Got it, it didn't change. No. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so I'm calling the roll. Jordan. Uh, yes. Me, Gabrielle, yes. Uh, Jamie. Yep. Ann Tulin. Yes. And Ann Winchester. Yes. Okay. Um, so that is that. I'm going to sign this and pass it on to the rest of you issued on May 8th, 2023. So if you guys sign all these documents, if they'll end up down here rows, I'll collect them from rows at the end of the meeting. Okay. Please. Now this is another copy. Also, it doesn't have a permit number on it. Does that that's matter? A, that's okay. Tegan has this just the whole the, the whole folder. It. Okay, so we're just signing this copy. Yeah. Okay. And you can pass the folder down with it, okay. so it all stays together. Thank you. Thank you very much for keeping that all organized. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, on to signing board orders. What is that? That's in the envelope. Uh, this whole this thing. Okay, do you want to start with you? And okay, so we're gonna sign board orders during the course of the meeting. Um, okay, uh, next order of business. Sam Dorkin has resigned as E nine one one coordinator, and we have another applicant who is able to begin the work immediately. Um, so, um, and that is Mark Whitman. Hello. Well, Hello. Uh, Thank you for uh, being willing to be E911 coordinator. Um, so let's see. Um, do we need to do anything other than approve that, Ann Winchester? Uh, we do not. You might like to say hello to Mark, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hi, hi, Ann. Are you in California? Uh, I, I, you know, I don't I'm having an awful time. Uh, are you in California? That was Mark Whitman asking you. Oh, yes, I'm in California. Yeah. Great. Hi, Mark. Hi. Um, I guess I'll just introduce myself. I've lived in Cal's for a while. Um, I, especially after the old select board left, it seemed there was a lot of work to do. I couldn't be someone like you guys. I didn't have that kind of time or commitment, but I wanted to help in some small way, and this fits perfectly, because um, I like maps, I like math, um, I like sending emails, and that's basically what this seems to entail. <laughs> and I can send the emails on my own time. Um, and it turns out I have 
fabulous support from the guy at the state level who double checks everything and assigns yeah. to me. He will write me back at 10.30 at night. He's, he's amazing. Um, so I guess that's it. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you so much for um, your willingness to do it. Sure. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm happy to help. Okay, so, um, all right. Uh, do I, can I get a motion to appoint Mark Whitman as E911 coordinator? So moved. Second. Okay, um, there's a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Thank you, Mark. Oh, thank you, Mark. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm calling the roll. Jordan. Uh, yes. And Gabrielle, yes. Jamie. Yes. Ann Tulin. Yes. And Ann Winchester. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Next up, the um, East Montpelier Fire Department fire truck loan. Um, in March 2022, the voters authorized the select board to borrow up to 66,667 for a term not to exceed five years to pay for our one third share of a new fire pumper for the East Montpelier Fire Department. Callis did not receive the loan because at the time we did not have a town treasurer as required by the bank and the amount of 13,667 was allocated for first payment of the loan in the FY23 budget. Nothing was budgeted FY24. The truck has been ordered and we expect it to be delivered in November or December of 23. Sondra Ferber, our town treasurer, has now applied for the loan. Um, so a possible action is to sign the loan proposal to secure a loan of 66,667 from Community Bank um, towards the new fire truck. So what does it mean, um, Ann Winchester, that nothing was budgeted for FY24? It's just, it isn't in there in the budget, but Sandra seems unconcerned about that. She feels that um, there's going to be enough that we'll be able to pay off the um, percentage that we have to pay next year. Okay. Um, have folks had a chance to look at the loan letter from um, yes. Wendy Bay? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have not specifically, but um, I, I don't have specific questions about it. Okay. All right. Um, so I think I am looking for a motion to, to, um, do I need a motion, Ann, or do I do it? Am I looking for an, a motion for signing the loan proposal? And uh, is it, yes, I do have to express to my It says it's duly authorized agent. So yeah. I'd so like. The motion would be to uh, authorize you to sign it on behalf of the town. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion to authorize me to Don't sign. Move. Second. <laughs> and second. All right. Um, any discussion? Okay. Uh, I'm going to call the roll. Jordan. Yes. And me. Yes. And Jane. Yes. Ann Tulin. Yes. And Ann Winchester. Yes. Okay. So I'm signing that. Okay. And. Next order of business is to review the contract with Nemeric for payroll services. In today's Google folder, there are um, there's a two-page document, which is actually two contracts, correct? Correct. There were actually three, but we can't apply the cloud of um, services right now because we don't have sufficient internet. Okay. So, so the idea would be designed for the bulk purchase of their time and the um, the services for payroll. Okay, so the bulk time purchase is really the, the main contract for up to, what was it, 96 hours a year? Uh, yes, for the next year. Okay, and then the payroll service agreement well, it would be, I think I saw that it'll be prorated if we bring it back in-house. 
Uh, correct. As long as we use it for payroll services, we they will, yes, fit for that. And they agree. They have no problem with canceling it if at any point we have somebody else ready to do it. Well, how, how are we doing it in-house if we're using them for payroll services? Well, you'll recall um, the treasurer used to do this, uh, but she did not want to. She said it, it, it's a matter of uh, <coughs> cutting the checks, you know, reviewing the hours and cutting the checks. And so we authorized, you know, I think our first meeting to, for Nemeric to continue doing that piece of it and for Sandra to keep doing the rest of the treasurer's position. Okay. Is that, yeah. So, if the, the bulk time purchase of 96 hours does not include payroll, and most of what they were doing except payroll, Sandra's doing. The piece that Sandra's not doing is the, um, the reconciliation, the monthly statements and the reconciliation piece. Barbara, help me out here. Is so, that right? That, that is absolutely correct. And, and we're con I, the only piece that gives me pause <laughs> is that the 96 hour minimum, that if we didn't hit that, we'd have to pay the balance up to 96 correct. hours. Correct. I talked that over with Barbara, uh, with Sandra, and she assured me that we would easily hit that because they also do the annual audit. Ah. And, uh, uh, I can't remember a couple of other things. Okay. That takes a lot of time. Okay. Okay, so do I need to be authorized to sign or um, or should we should we have a motion to um, authorize me to sign the NEMRIC contracts? Well you have we would have you would need to sign the two contracts and initial all the places where we wrote I wrote. Oh, okay. Because you changed the dates. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So. So, uh, so I move that um, Gabrielle be authorized to sign the Nimrick contract on behalf of the town of Palace and to initial the date, uh, the starting date for the bulk purchase on April 1st, ending March 31st of next year. And I don't seem to have the other one in front of me, but I think there were some things to it earlier too. Okay. Uh, the other one you did not have date changes on, the payroll service agreement with the town of Callis. It's a, if you're okay. in the Google Drive, it's the same, it's the same document. It's just a two-page document with the two um, okay. contracts. And uh, yeah, that one doesn't have any corrections to initial. Uh, yeah. Is there a second? Second. Okay, that was Jamie. Second, any discussion? Can you just kind of restate it? I just wrote that Ann made a motion to authorize you to sign the two contracts and to initial the contract dates. Is that good enough? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So. Um, okay. Um, uh, Jordan. Yes. Okay. And Gabrielle, yes. Jamie? Yes. And Ann Tulin? Yes. And Ann Winchester. Yes. Okay. I will sign those and initial. And um, the next item is to review the contract for services with Washington County Sheriff's Department and a possible action to sign the contract. Um, has any? Has everybody reviewed the uh, sheriff contract? I'll report that the reason you didn't sign it last time was you wanted to be sure that if we get into the year and decide we need more, we, they would be flexible enough for that. And Sheriff Poulin assured me that they would be. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And did you happen to uh, get any more clarification on uh, on how the overtime hours are applied or calculated relative to the balance? No, I, if I was supposed to do that, I apologize. You you weren't. I was, uh, but it sounded <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, and and I and I did not. So. Um, 
I was just wondering if, if it came up in uh, in, the, in your clarification that you had received, but that's okay. If it's not between the hours of whatever, 8, 9 to 5 or 8 to 4 or whatever, right. then they charge us overtime. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so this is one that if we approve it, all five of us sign. So, um, do people need a little time to look back over this contract? Okay. Um, is there a, can I have a motion to um, approve the sheriff contract? So moved. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Okay, uh, Jordan. Yes. Gabrielle, yes. Uh, Jamie. Yes. Ann Tulin. Yes. And Ann Winchester. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to pass this around. I'm noticing there's two signature pages. That, that way I can mail one back to them with live signatures on it. Okay. And this is the contract for fiscal year 24, is that correct? Yes, yes. correct. Thank you. Um, today is 5, 8, 23, okay, sorry, oh wait, right, that's right, so we'll do, we'll each do both of them. Sorry, audience, I know it's, okay, can't it's mesmerizing. talk and shoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, so isn't that boring? <laughs> okay, what's this one? I think that's the next, the town contract. For okay. The dual. All right, next up. Um, the town has received a $90,000 grant to repair the Moscow Woods Road Bridge. Um, DeWolf Engineering has agreed to do the engineering design work for between $9,000 and $13,500 plus expenses, which would be paid from the grant. Um, so we have um, a contract with DeWolf Engineering and I think the motion would be to authorize a road commissioner to sign the contract with DeWolf Engineering. And so that would be Jamie and Ann. Um, and is there only space for one signature? I think it's just one. Yeah, Jamie this, can do it. That's fine. This is a contract that was initiated in October, I think, in the last select board. Um, signed it or lost track of it, I forget which John might remember, but I think it, it never got initiated. Um, and so took the DeWolf contract for the um, engineering work on the temporary Moscow. repair on the Moscow Bridge. Um, so Toby just got back up, back in touch with them. They updated it, the numbers were similar, and sent a new copy for signature. Yeah, yeah. Rick, Rick King was the point guy on that, so. It's regardless that yes. this is moving that forward show. and it's all um, part of that $90,000 grant that we got, which will cover you know, the majority of the project, which is slated to be 110, roughly, is the estimate, I think. 120? Yeah, and, and my recollection was that the work that they were doing was uh, both to scope out a um, a temporary solution um, that would buy time for a more permanent solution, um, yep. but yeah. Yep. So I'd I'd make a motion, I guess, to uh, authorize Jamie uh, to uh, to sign the contract with the Wolf uh, for the purpose of designing. The Moscow Woods bridge repair. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. I'll call the roll. Jordan. Uh, yep. Gabrielle, yes. Jamie. Yes. Ann Tulin. Yes. And Ann Winchester. Yes. Okay. All right. That brings us, and you just checked that, right? Yes. That brings us to public comment. Um, we do have some 
quite a few folks here. So, um, yeah, and who's here for public comment? John and Mark and uh, Jim. Jim. Okay, um, and John. John, what's your last name? Cool. K-O-H-R. K-O-H-R, okay. Um, okay, so I think the order that folk, folks came in were Mark, John, Jim, and John, does that sound right? <laughs> okay, that's how we're gonna do it. And um, we have, let's see, half an hour, um, so there's four of you, so let's just keep it to, what does that equal? Four to 30 divided by four is, you know, under seven and a half minutes each. Shouldn't be any trouble. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what, what I wanted to talk about was the speed limit reductions. And I see that that's on the agenda for later tonight. Would it be more appropriate if I asked and that's you? What yeah. I want to that's what I want to talk about. Me too. Or, or should, or maybe we should use the time now to do that. I, I'm unclear. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to figure out what it is. Yeah, so let's see. Um, okay, so we've got four folks here to talk about the speed limit reductions. And um, that is, are you calling that on, under the report section at 715? The um, traffic studies. The traffic, traffic study. wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, the traffic studies. Um, are folks okay with taking up that matter now? So the folks that are here for yeah, we'll look on if they don't want to have to. Okay. So, um, so that's part of a report. Should we hear the report first? Sure. And then yeah. we'll do public comment. Right, yeah. because that, that might answer the, the questions. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, Jamie and Anne, do you want to take it away? Sure. So, my understanding of this is that the last, over, over, a course of several years, the former select board heard from a lot of residents um, that they had concerns and thoughts about speed limits on a variety of roads in Calais. Um, one of them, I don't know if there's specific roads people are particularly interested, but one of them is the section of County Road that's 50 currently. Um, and there was a petition four or five years ago? <clears throat> no, less? Um, last year. Last year, uh, from residents on that road requesting it be reduced to 40 miles per hour. Um, if I can clarify, yeah. that was after they couldn't get the select board <clears throat> to initiate anything. So petition the board and you're, you're bound to get some action more immediately. So that's kind of what happened. And then that, that opened a broader conversation um, about speed limits and John did a lot of the work I believe looking at the town ordinance which roads are 35 which are 30 which have high pedestrian traffic which have dangerous corners farms with livestock etc and made an initial proposal to reduce the speed limits on quite a few roads in Calais um, there was a public hearing that I was at, and I think Jordan was at, and probably, maybe not, I can't I remember. I know. Um, discussing this, and a lot of people came and shared support. Um, I think the vast majority, maybe all but one in attendance, um, who gave their opinion were in support of changing these speed limits. And so the select board, at one of their last meetings, um, passed an update to the Callis traffic ordinance. Uh, when we took over a couple weeks later, we looked at that, um, and before just running out and buying all new speed limit signs, um, we had a bunch of conversations, and we learned that there had in the statute for changing speed limits, um, you're supposed to do a traffic study in order to change outside of certain parameters. 
those traffic studies were not done um, for these roads. And so what we decided was that we would, instead of simply instituting the change, we would go ahead and start the process of doing some of those traffic studies and, and, and learn more about the parameters. Um, and there's a lot of rules about what you can do with speed limits based on the traffic studies. Um, so we have contracted with Central Vermont Regional Planning. They do traffic studies for free. Um, we're on their calendar for doing traffic studies this summer on Rainy. County Road, Rainy. Lightning Ridge Road, I th and two others, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and that's sort of what they felt they could get done for us this summer. And that was the, the priority list we gave them based on what we knew about people's interest. Um, and so our, our plan, as I understand it, was to conduct those traffic studies and then revisit the issue um, later in the summer or fall once we have the information um, and move from there. So that's sort of my understanding of where we are and how we got there. <laughs> that makes sense. Great, great. Um, so I'll be really curious to hear what the results of the studies are. Um, yeah. to see if, if they think it's a good idea to lower the speed limits or if they say no, they're, they're fine the way they are. Um, yeah. My, my under oh, maybe they could go on. <laughs> <laughs> my understanding is that there's, and Ann Winchester may know more about this, but my understanding is that there are rules, they sort of throw away the 15% fastest cars in the study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And That's look at that 85th percent, right. percentile. And unless you have a really compelling reason, you can't go below sort of that what people drive. Because the fear on the state end mm -hmm. is if, you, if everybody's driving 50 and you set the speed limit to 40, people are just going to pass each other. Mm -hmm. And that's more dangerous than just letting everybody go 50. Right. Right. Um, and, and so I think we have to see the traffic studies before we make any decisions. Right, no, that, that makes sense. So just to know that AOT has their interpretation of the statute, and then there are many other legal lines that would disagree. Um, the study is, is informative, it's advisory, but once you do that, you take that into account among other factors and then ultimately the decision of this is of the selector having done that. So if people choose to go 100 miles an hour, which you know I hate on County Road at a few fields, and I'll tell you, my, my tractor broke down last year, and I walked along past Wayne Morse's old property. It was scary as can be. People going in pickup trucks, passing each other, cars going 50 or 60, getting passed at 70 or 80. Um, you know, so, so that's a problem. Yeah. This double yellow line there is a corner there. And so anyway, there are many other factors. Yeah. The level, the types of uses of the road. So you look at the speed. If it's, you know, maybe Route 14 or Route 2, that's one thing. But you have a road like County Road um, or Robinson Cemetery Road where you oh, have... that was one of the studies. You have, that's one of the roads. Yeah. Old oh, Church Road. You have a town that's population is increasing, increasing. Yeah. You have a town whose population is increasingly trying to get out of doors and use our roads for other than driving. They're walking people. There's what everyone knows in Maple Corner as the walking loop. They walk around up West County Road and back down Robinson Cemetery Road. There are blind hills and corners. So. Yeah, there might be people who are willing to go 35, 40 on that, but given considering the types of uses, kids on bicycles who operate bicycles in a different way than maybe adults do, et cetera, we have, now we have, um, what do they call them, gravel bikers all over the place on my road. It's like the big thing. We have races up and down my road, running races pretty much weekly. 
from Madman. Um, there's all these different types of uses now, and you can all take that into consideration yeah. to counterbalance people deciding what the speed limit should be by virtue of putting the pedal to the metal. So we understood that. The select board also understood there's a caveat at the bottom of that statute that says, basically this is from memory, um, once, once five years has transpired, the, the need to, to have in hand a traffic study is no longer a requirement. We also know that many or most, but every, every road in this town that's posted 25 never had a traffic study, every single one. And we also know that five years has come and gone, including Apple Hill. Um, so, you know, so I, I just, so the select board took that all into consideration. We did talk to our attorney about it. And so we went forward. And in addition, the traffic ordinance changes included some signage changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. A stop sign here. We've had uh, uh, a resident from Maple Corner actually got hit when a, a FedEx truck went rolling right through and hit him on a bicycle. Um, we've had people clipped on County Road more than once, and they came and testified at the hearing. Um, and so, and we also have. Janet Ansel brought up the issue with the, the Y where Bliss Pond enters yeah. um, Old West Church Road. People come flying through, they don't realize they need to look over their shoulder and they're cutting off cars or clipping or putting pedestrians in cyclo service. So, so part of the ordinance was to put yield signs there just as a wake up. Yeah. And, and lastly, the ordinance is now in effect. So, I mean, it's still a discretion, it's like enforcement discretion whether you want to put up signage or not. I would encourage you that at least the, the roads you're not concerned about doing a study on, that you put the signs up and also put the stop sign and the yield signs up that we anticipated happening, that yeah. those don't require a, a study to be done. Well, we were informed by the Washington County Sheriff that several of our speed limit signs were out of um, compliance. They're not up to code. They're not no, up to code. So we actually have no, a whole big project. Square of, inches. <laughs> not other older. Size. Yeah. 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 Size. And, and so when that, when that is the case, the speed limits default to, I can't remember what he said, but something faster than anything. Miles an hour. Yeah. So... Um, so there's some work to do, but I, yeah. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to go forward with the traffic studies and um, I think reconvene. Yeah, the we issue after sort that. of on the docket for this summer is doing some type of a sign <coughs> inventory, okay. figuring out, because I think it was in that public meeting where the ordinance was passed, it came out that there are, there are likely some roads that the the current ordinance and the signs up don't actually match anymore. No, they do now. They do now. They, do now. <clears throat> they didn't. Um, oh, well, actually, the signs up. Oh, I don't know. No, that's yes. true. That's true. Yes. Um, yeah, this road. Right. Um, and that was recognized in the hearing. And, right. And you know. and so we just, we, we're going to work with the road crew and Excellent. sort of figure out exactly which roads the signs are up to code, which ones they're not. and and do these other signs as part of a broader sign compliance. We project. did have a resident, I think it was a resident, but we had a speeder come through Maple Corner a couple, three years ago, and they did their due diligence and realized that the sign needed to be posted at a certain height, even though it was right there. It was summer. They're at a certain height because of snow. It was summer, but it said, didn't say winter or summer, and they got the ticket thrown out because the post wasn't, so we had to raise the post. Right. Yeah. So. Well, and that's something that the sheriff office had brought yeah. up is that even if everything is to spec, they are under considerable amount of pressure from the courts to yeah. reduce everything um, yeah. and to really minimize ticketing people. So that was his advice: was to do everything as um, to book. spec as possible. Yeah. You know, the traffic studies, making sure our signs are the right size and shade of white or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that when we do have the sheriff's office come out because their costs have gone up like everything else in this state, they can be effective instead of paying a lot of money and then, you know, it gets thrown yeah, that out. That was frustrating for them. Yeah. That, that, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I had just a, just a little yeah. more. 
um, but, but I don't think my time's up yet. Um, <laughs> so I get, my thinking about it before I came down was that um, obviously there's a lot of, I don't know if there's a lot, but there's people that go way too fast on the back roads. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that follow the speed limits on the back roads. And I'm wondering if lowering the speed limit is going to slow down the people that are already going too fast. Or if lowering the speed limit is just going to slow down those of us who are already following the speed limit. So that, that's a, a, a very that, good point. And, and, and that's largely why they recommend doing the, the traffic study, because I think it's, it's pretty um, easy for us all to think of instances uh, of, of when we experience the speeders and get frustrated with people whipping by. Oh, um, uh, but, and, and, and anecdotally, I, I had uh, the, the manifestation of the opposite problem this morning. There was slow traffic and there was somebody on the county road um, uh, just coming out of Montpelier. Uh, and there was an individual from <coughs> out of state who decided that that slow traffic was too slow. And it was, they were going the speed limit. Um, and they passed them on a blind turn. And so the reason for the traffic studies um, is because if you have a, an, the average individual who's going to follow the speed limit or drive what they consider to be a reasonable, uh, reasonable speed, there are always going to be individuals who think that that speed is unreasonably slow and then they start, they start behaving uh, dangerously, um, and you can have an adverse impact on dangerous be right. behavior by slowing like, some like folks James down. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, uh, so, uh, and, and we got that feedback from the sheriff as, uh, as well. Um, and just having a greater understanding of, of the impacts on both, both sides of, of making a change like that. Um, because right. right. I, I guess I'd want to, I'd want to advocate in some way for those of us who are always a little behind and have a little too much to do. And we're trying to get to work, we're trying to pick up kids, um, we're trying to get to meetings, and we don't necessarily need to go another five miles an hour slower. <laughs> like, I, like I, I wonder if that is too much of an encumbrance to try to solve a problem that isn't gonna be solved by that. That, I, that, I think that's well, and that's what the traffic that's studies <clears throat> show because yeah, if, it, yeah. if you set it too low yeah. and the average comfortable speed for the average person is 35 and we make it 25, um, then you increase the risk, like Jamie said, of people trying to pass each other and yeah, so yeah. trying right. to find that right. balance and unfortunately that people that haul through are going to do it. You yeah. know, I've yeah. almost been run off the road. Right. It was a stolen vehicle. I'm guessing yeah. the fella didn't really care that he would have done enough to steal someone's see, car. We see this all the time, and you're like, what is going on? Yeah, but, and it's some roads have more of a problem with that than others in town. Right. Um, but. but just to be clear, I mean, county road being different, kind of separate that from the other nine, maybe. I don't know if that's what we under. For the most part, the other roads had constraints where 35, posted speed limit was too fast. When people were going the speed, it was too fast for the safety of the pedestrian, cycling, public. And there was a recognition that people use these roads for multiple of, yeah. of uses, not just automobiles. So it was about balancing the rights of automobile drivers and the rest of us. Basically, it was trying to make our community more friendly to all in all. Um, it, and so that, that's why those roads were chosen out of all the other roads. Um, it wasn't because we wanted to get people to go 35, we were going 50. If it was moved to 30, uh, 25, it was because that was the right speed. So we all thought. Um, so I just want to make a clarification for that there. Okay, um, I want to give Jim and John, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I drive a lot, because I did service work for years. I mean, a lot, a lot, to tell us. And the thing, I don't want to see speed limits reduced, like, but that's just my first opinion. Um, I think if you drive the speed limit, they're great, everything's fine. I mean, maybe a little fast, like Duggar Brook, 30 miles an hour around the Turner here, you know, there's a few things. I think the thing that drives me crazy, and I think it drives everybody I talk to, customers, 
is you leave Maple Corners and you, everybody goes 35 to the 25. Then they hit, they get up to, you know, but the weird thing is, is when they go 40, and that's what pisses everybody off, because it's 50. And so everybody, I mean, it happens twice or three times a week, out of Calus, you go 40 miles an hour all the way to Montpelier. And I don't do anything, I just go, okay, it's a slow day. And I just back up, and I'm like, what a bummer. But I'd say 25% of the time, someone will pass me and that person. And my logic is, what I think what Mark and yours said, is if you put it at 40, I know you don't agree with me, but sorry, but, uh, people are gonna be pissed. They're gonna be, and everybody in my house is like, what, are you kidding me, 40 miles an hour? You know, and then, you know, other things are like, they, wa they wanted to put 50 East Montpelier, a lot of people, you know, it's, I mean, I don't, just county road is interesting. I think what the problem is, the signages. I think you need a big, bigger fucking, excuse me, big signs. Because a lot of times as you leave, I, you, I look at people's eyes as they drive, they don't know it's 50. You know, a lot of them might not be here or something, but there's only one little sign and they missed it and they're like, oh, it can't be 50. Or, you know, or, or they'll, I don't know. My logic is I think you just need better signs. Um, bigger and better, and more signs. I mean, I don't know. But I th my last thing is I think the speed limits are fine, except for a few on the back roads. That's all I'm gonna say. And even, I mean, I know County Road, I, I bike it all the time. And usually good people, drivers, like good drivers, they'll slow down or they'll wait till a car. Yeah, there's of course a stupid idiot who just, you know, they just bomb by me as someone else is there. And I, I know and I'll stop and pull off or something. I mean. I don't know. <laughs> That's my two cents. Okay. Um, you done, Jim? Yeah, I'm all done. John. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been past many, many times, you know, just with kids and just out of state or just going way too fast, like 80s on, on, on county and other back roads, but uh, all signs aside, like, I don't think the signs are going to do anything. Is there, is there any way we can station? A, I know we don't have our own police force, but like, is there any way to station a cop here and there, just to, occasionally, even once a month? You know, I, I know there was one that would sit on uh, what Haggett Road every once in a while. County Road, they do it once a month. But yeah, yeah. once a month, like catching people on. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen one in. In years. We have those contracts and we do, we've, I've seen them down on 14, I've seen them up at Maple Corners. The okay. challenge is, as we had shared earlier, one of our signs aren't the right size, they can get it thrown out. Right. So there's so many specifications sure. um, and particularly with their cost up, we want to make sure that if we have them come out, if they pull someone over, it's going to be able to stick. Right. Um, but they are very willing when they came and met with us to not only do the main drags, but they'd be willing to park on Lightning Ridge. Yeah, I know there's ongoing friends, challenges with like friends. the school traffic, hurry oh, to get their kids dropped off. And um, because the presence can help, even for the most um, committed speeding folks. But that's kind of why, I mean, we're still getting into it. We still have the contract, but because their prices have gone up, because they have to, we just want to make sure when we have the sheriff come out, it's going to have impact. Right. And be more than spending 120 or $180 in, you know, deterring it for so, one afternoon. So a, a point of information, there was a time when the town received the full amount of the ticket. This legislature changed, changed that law, unfortunately, to our detriment. But that the cost of it, it still didn't cost us much, we said, Way back when we were talking with the sheriff, back when we, were, we got the full amount, we'll take 40 hours a week. And they said they have to spread themselves across the entire New York right. County. Mm -hmm. And same thing with costs. So they, they gave us the full allocation, which is a tiny amount of time. And I, I noticed the sheriff actually, surprisingly, um, at uh, Donor, was it Donor Road or Fitch Road, mm -hmm. um, just yesterday. Um, I, it used to be the state police would patrol East Montpelier, um, but now it's the sheriff. So now they're splitting their time between us and them. Maybe they patrolled the us yesterday, but it's a very minimal amount of time to give us. Yeah, it's, it's cut, cut, it's cut in half of now because the per hour is, is pretty much double what it used right. to be. Oh, so our $4,000 a year contract is going half as far. It's yeah. about an hour a week. 
Yeah. So, but we can adjust it um, if we uh, find that it's underserved. And the reason there was a state trooper on Haggett often was because that state trooper pretty much lived there. Lived there. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, right. I got a ticket there once. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Can I have one last quick comment? Absolutely. Um, so they're going to do this traffic study, and then um, you said earlier that they did a petition and stuff. Everybody wants it reduced. Will you, the select board, um, look at the thing and says, no, we're not, we're not going to reduce it, or you know, it's up to you, though. You know, it's all, and John says it's an opinion. So what? So then it's, it's just going to. Are you going to go by? Is there going to be another comment? I mean. I mean, it seems to me like it needs to be put out there maybe to the residents or something, I think. You know, yeah, not just go, okay, we got this study in the select board, just change it. Yeah. Does that make any sense? We haven't discussed this in depth, but I, yeah. I, would, I, mean, assume I would assume that we'll do the study, we'll get the information, and we'll hold a public hearing. Okay, great. That's awesome. all I care about. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, good. That'll, that'll be perfect. Can I make a comment or is it too late? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I apologize for coming in late. I hope I'm not repeating anyone, but. I've been going on, coming out on County Road since 1982, and there was hardly any traffic back then, and I think 50 was fine back then, but I think we need to reduce it now because of all the new population. However, I don't really like 40. Um, they, um, I was hoping for maybe a Goldilocks, 50's too fast, and I guess when I love the um, and, <laughs> and it would be nice because I think 40 is maybe a bit too slow um, but that's that's my opinion and I'd like to also just say when you're policing it uh, 50, maybe not for 50, if you leave at 50, but there's days when I'm daydreaming and I don't intend, I usually go 45, and then, but there's day, days when I'm daydreaming and I go a little bit faster, and so I hope you're not making it so that if you're going 41 and a half, you're going to get a ticket. I, I hope... I don't, I yeah. don't know if you didn't. Sheriffs and Harvey wouldn't think that. I, no, but I mean, they don't have to stop someone who's going 45 or even. They write I think the you're, after the, you're after the people that are going. Because I've been passed. I've actually stopped and yelled at people yeah. at the store. Right. Because I'll, they I'll were stop going every time. Them. I stop every time. Yeah, if and, they, if and, they stop, or I'm following. And so, so, but I'm just <laughs> hoping bad. that. They can be have a little leeway because sometimes it's just you're not paying. Attention yeah, I don't. That going. I don't envision the sheriff's office doing that sort of speed trap where they're just hiding out, waiting for someone to go from the 50 to the 40 zone, and the second they hit the 40 no, zone, they, they're they, like, they, rah, 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 you know. they can give warnings versus giving you a ticket. Yeah, no, and I think our goal would be to get the most egregious. Yeah, I, you, know, you know, and a lot of that too. I think is, that's our intention is to stop the. The people going extremely fast. Yeah. Not going five miles over the speed limit. So. Okay, any other public comment? Well, just in my, in our experience, the sheriff, I've talked to the sheriffs obviously over the years, they don't write over for, you have to be beyond five miles an hour to speed limit to get a ticket. Yeah. And even and if it's the first time, it's a warning usually anyway. <laughs> but if you're 10 over, you're getting a ticket. Yeah. And we told them that. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. But I don't know if I agree with you on that. Oh, you know someone got to find. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I think if that's it for public comment, we're going to move on to Calus zoning regulations. Um, so the Planning Commission has completed its proposed amendments to the Calus zoning regulations. Oh, and thank you, everybody who public commented. Mm -hmm. Um, and held its second public hearing on May 2nd to answer questions and hear concerns. At this meeting, the, the Planning Commission will formally present the draft to the Select Board for review and acceptance. So, Jan, is there anything you want to say? Are you going to cry? Because <laughs> you're so excited that we're almost <laughs> No, I'll, I'll stay back here. Yeah, can, you, can you hear me? No, you can hear me. Um, Jordan, do you have, I 
I had a copy of the um, of the required report. I had it on the email. I don't know, Jordan, you know that's a meeting at the hearing. I, I wasn't. I was hoping to be there, but I didn't get a chance to. Yeah, I'd love to. you need a copy I have from here? Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, so the what is out on our website, on the town website, is the required report, which pretty much outlines everything um, that is in this. We did give the official uh, formatted clean draft. Uh, I think I sent it to Barbara on the 4th of May or the 5th of May. So hopefully you all have a copy of what is the final um, from the planning perspective draft of these regulations. What I do want to say, this is really important for the Planning Commission. We started this process in 2016 to try to get a shoreland overlay. And it has been a very long time. We added, as things were moving along, we added more things to this. The river corridor, we rewrote flood hazard, um, we rewrote the process for uh, doing design advisory board and a few other things. So it kind of morphed into this big um, new amendment. Um, so I, it's really important for us that we hope that you uh, will you know, look it over and really approve it. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about process because the process is, design, is from statute. Um, you have to hold a public hearing, and I think Anne mentioned something about holding it maybe June 12th. If you folks on the select board have changes of substance, we have to know those at least 14 days before your hearing. So that means if you find something that you want changed, and we change it, for that hearing. If after that you find something else to be changed, then you have to hold a second hearing. And, and this is kind of like the process. Also, the warning for your hearing has to be done 15 days before, <laughs> before your hearing. So um, I'll work with Tegan at getting the necessary um, warnings out for you if you let me know what all you want to do along, along that line. But that's the process. And then if you approve it, um, do you, you hold a public hearing, you approve it after that public hearing. Technically, uh, it is usual, it has gone to vote. So we have to hold a special vote. And we've been working with Barbara and Tegan as to what kind of vote <laughs> this would be. There, usually it's a warning of about two sentences that says the town will approve the amendments. Um, Tegan and Barb have said that they would print the ballot uh, for us, and basically people will have to ask for the ballot to be mailed to them. I think that's the way it has been decided. Or vote in person on the Or vote in person on the date that is chosen. So those are, that's the process that, that we have. Um, and as always, if you have questions as you're going through this, um, and you'd like to have those questions answered, just get in touch with anybody on the Planning Commission. Are, are there rules about the length of time between the public hearing and the vote? Yes, absolutely. So that's why I was raising my hand, is we need to build in enough time to, to meet all statutory guide, guidelines on how far in advance all this has to be done before an election can be held. And that we have to wrap into there also calling a meeting of the Board of Civil Authority to vote on having an election. They, they have to approve the date, the location, and so forth. So there's just lots and lots of steps along the way that we have to all meet statutorily. But having said that, you, the select board can, in fact, be the final approval. It does not have to go to Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. It's just that our town has at each time because we made it in time for March and the town meeting, it made it for the vote. But um, doing a research with, uh, I was in a meeting at Central Vermont Regional Planning and we had about eight different towns. One was Marshfield, Waitsfield, I can't remember some of the others that were on the meeting. And I asked how many towns 
had Australian ballot to vote to approve regulations and how many stopped at the select board and had the select board only approve it. It was 50-50. It was um, pretty amazing. Four towns went for Australian ballot, four towns went for um, the select board had final approval. And I think about this a little bit. When you have an ordinance, you don't put an ordinance out for a vote. And in my mind, these regulations are really almost like an ordinance. You are putting forth regulations on how to develop this land in, this, in the town of Callis. We have an enforcement officer called a zoning administrator. And so it's just a thought for you all to think about. If you decide you want to have it and go on for vote, that's fine. If you want to be the final say, that's fine too. I just, I'm just putting it out there. Um, any questions? <laughs> yeah, what is the, um, what's the date that we're working backwards from? In other words, when does it have to be approved by? Okay. We are working, our final drop dead date uh, is September 19th. And why is that the drop dead date? Because that was our first public hearing was last year, September 20th, 2022. We have one year to approve these changes. So the Australian ballot would have to, that day would have to be before September 19th. Right, but we had to consider the fact that we have tax bills and we have town people, the town clerk has to work out with the tax bill and voting. And so it, when Ann and I were discussing this with Barbara and with Tegan, it was like what fits their schedule and we moved it to July, a possible July vote in order so that they can produce the tax bills without having to um, interrupt the, the, yeah, interrupt the tax bill with the vote. I mean, so we were trying to also accommodate the town office. Um, and I'm just kind of curious, like as you've been um, deliberating these changes, uh, do, how, what kind of public participation do you get typically at your meetings? Very rare. Uh, I would say since September, we've had a lot of input from conservation, Larry, Noreen, and a few others from conservation. Typically, we have nobody come to our meetings. Um, in terms of what we did to prepare for this, though, starting in 2016, 2017, 2018, we held three informational meetings, one in Adamant, one at Maple Corner, and one in the rec center. And we accommodated all of the areas of the lakes. And Adamant was important because they had never before been in Shoreland District. And so we've taken all of those informational meetings became our source for this. Okay. Um. Can, can we hear comment, public make comment? Yeah, I think John was first, though. Go ahead, John. A couple of points of clarification. Um, zoning ordinances are ordinances by statute. And my understanding of the statute is um, unless the town's folks, town people vote otherwise, either a town meeting or a special meeting, select boards approve zoning ordinances. That's your bailiwick. If the people of any particular town feel that they want to have the ultimate say as to what the zoning, whether the zoning changes or zoning regulations in the first instance should go into effect at a, at a Warren Town meeting, they can require that in lieu of the select board or instead of the select board, yeah, um, that it, it be required that the, uh, that the zoning regulations proposed be subjected to a full vote of the town um, by Australian ballot. Now this predates me, but my understanding, it's only hearsay, and Jan may know better, she may have done the research. <laughs> my, my, I'm not, I have not. And uh, so uh, my understanding was that that discussion was had at town meeting, in the town, or at a, a meeting of the town, and it was decided to go Australian ballot. Um, and Jan knows better, so I'll stop well, right there. <laughs> no, but I have researched that. Good. I could never find in any town meeting, going back to 2010, 
Oh no, this this is long ago. Well, I know, but we could never find. And Jeremy was here too, and we were researching. We could never find where a vote had gone that it would go for Australian ballot forever and ever and ever. In other words, it said from here on in. What it happens is that each and every year the vote was made. This year we're going to vote for this whenever you know, it came out. But as, as a town, we have never put in a request that said, from here on in, all the, the zoning regulations will be forever voted on by Australian ballot. That has never been done. And that may, that may be because my understanding was when this town, like all towns, didn't have zoning, and that there was a brouhaha here in whether it should have zoning or not. And so it, there was uh, a vote to compel that zoning. If we're going to adopt our first set of zoning rights, then maybe it's not going forward, but at least the very first ones uh, were required, were subject to a full vote of the town. My understanding was that was a requirement that all zoning that regs and changes to that uh, were required, required a full vote of the, of the electorate. Mm -hmm. um, so, and this is, this is 1980s. This is not 2010. <laughs> Back Do you have a clarifying question? Otherwise, I'm going to go to Marge next. I have a clarifying question. Okay, go ahead. Um, and I certainly might have the answer. You know, I was with the select board for 18 years, and I can't tell you how many times I've typed that document. <laughs> um, and it's my understanding that it's the select boards um, that gives the final stamp. And we are in our town. We have never gone and switched it. That it's a town-wide vote. I'm 99% sure it's a select board that re, um, authorizes the... You, so you, as far as you know, there's never been an Australian ballot since you've been paying attention for zoning regs. It's always been worse. Since I was in the board, zoning has always approved that Australian yeah, I, um, I, plan. If I knew that I plan needed to find the answer, I would have had the answer. Okay. Um, I can definitely just look at it. Okay. All right. And March. I, I just want to mention, I do respect Jan and all the crowd that have worked on this. I know I just like to work on something for a long time. But I do feel that this is of, of a, such a large magnitude that I think our town has a culture where people want to be able to have a say in what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I think we should accommodate a method and one that fits into the September 19th deadline so that the town can vote on it. Whether it's binding or not, I think the town needs to have an opinion, be able to express their opinion. I know I was mad at John when he, when the select board said that we had to go out to vote for the bond issue on the dam, but I realized that that was the best thing that we did when we had, when we did go out to vote and we had the town give the uh, the approval at two to one. It, I think it's the right thing to do. Maybe it's not the precedent, but I think it's the right thing to do. So, Jim. So and and you that was the right decision, John. Well, I, I didn't make it our attorney. No, we had to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you that I was mad at the time, but was it was messenger. the right it was the right thing to do. <laughs> so I just looked at the existing document, zoning document, and it lists at the top for a 11 amendments since 2005. Right. And 10 of the 11 say they were amended by town vote. Mm -hmm. And one of them says it was adopted by the select board. When was that? January 3rd, 2005. The first one? Really? The first one. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that's and when there was all a, the amendments I'm say wondering right if there was the something point. happened at a town meeting or a special mm -hmm. meeting was called. Particularly was the culture of Scott of Quarry. Earth, mineral resources, and extraction allowed in a rural residential town. That was 05. That's what happened. <laughs> that's <laughs> why they're on my computer. Okay. Well, that's Not this one, my home. Yeah. Uh, Rose has it all. I, I just want to, I guess, the concern I have is having a vote, and I'm conscious of the time, that having a vote in the summertime in July, or even if, if it's on Labor Day, sorry, Barbara, um, you know, how, what, how many people are really going to be interested in voting? 
We had 10 people show up for one public hearing, uh, and the first public hearing we had 13 people. And of the 10 people on the second, four were the select board. So I mean, and our meetings are public for crying out loud. Nobody shows. So I'm sorry, I, I agree uh, in principle that democracy requires a vote, but on something like this that has been open and going on for eight years, I, I just, I would just assume the select board approve it and let it go. So that our next ones that we do, which we are starting a to-do list for the next update. So, I'm sorry. And just a legal point of clarification, if, if in fact it wasn't a vote of the town's folks, as Rose seems to think, um, and the select board did adopt zoning regulations, if there were citizens that were agreed by it, they could always file a petition and then force it to a vote. So they already have their say. So. And just a, one thing is, uh, you said that if we were to warn a sol uh, sorry a sol a, a public hearing for June twelfth, you would need to know of any changes two weeks before June twelfth. Yes. Okay. So we got a month to work. No. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well, right. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking out loud to people who might really be interested in how the zoning regs affect them. Like, right now would be the time to read that beautiful long document and wrap your head around it and talk to your neighbors and figure out if there are changes and that would need to happen. Because, I, you know, I, I certainly would want to kick people into high gear thinking about it before the select board were to, and I'm not saying that's what we would do, but I, I would I would never take a vote of five people without understanding, you know, how people really feel about the document. And I understand the challenges of, of planning documents being um, hard to read, honestly. So um, I appreciate that, but that's a, a just another reason why I wouldn't vote on it without understanding mm -hmm. how people feel about it. Hi. And tell, uh, tell us your name. Margaret Reno. I would say, just, I'm not careful speeding, but <clears throat> I would say, listening to this, if I were a select board, I would look at like a grand jury versus prosecutor situation. Let the grand jury, the voters, deal with it. That way, if there's nothing controversial, it will pass. If there is controversial, it doesn't pass, then you uh, don't have to heat for not approving it or whatever. It's just a, it's a good way, it's, it's a democratic way. And, uh, it's a callous tradition, so I, that's what I would recommend. I would let well, the voters do it. Maybe 100 people will show up, but that's 100 people who are interested. And uh, maybe the vote, maybe on the front porch forum, there should be a synopsis of the changes in the, in the document. I mean, obviously, I think you can have a link to it, but just do a synopsis, just for changing exactly. A, B, C, and D, we're changing the shoreline, whatever, da 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 da, and more details are on clicks. Yeah, Most so people don't go to these meetings so because so you get too much to do. And plus, you know, I was on planning commission. I think I was with John back in Woodbury mm -hmm. ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Back in the days when the dinosaurs were on the earth. And mm -hmm. this people don't. Uh, they got other things to do in their meetings. Right? So anyway. that's what I would suggest. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there, Tegan, is there a minimum number of people that have to vote if a special vote is called? I don't think so. I, I, I don't know that for a fact, but I don't think so either. I mean, everybody's given the opportunity whether they show up or not it's on them. That's right. Yep. Okay. One vote. And honestly, <laughs> that's, that's why we plan to do it sort of in-house this election and print them as we go. We figured we could print 30, 50 at a pop and print more as we needed them instead of going to a printer and getting 1,000 and then 970 and then we're still sitting here at the end of the day. So that was kind of our thing. The actual regulations are 118. And you post a digital copy, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, hi, I'm Larry Bush. Uh, just on the procedural question, um, I, I think it sounds like it would be possible to hold this vote after Labor Day, but before this drop dead period later in September. And I would just urge you, if you're going to have a published vote, I, I, I personally think you should, but. Uh, if you do, I would urge you to do it after Labor Day for the reasons that several people have mentioned. I think you would increase the turnout for the vote. Um, 
and even the well, yeah, all the people who are eligible to vote, I think it would be better to do it after Labor Day. All right, so um, are we ready to talk about the public hearing and potentially scheduling it for June 12th? What do folks think? I mean, I think regardless of the decision, if it's, if we ultimately vote on it or if it, we do a town-wide vote, we want to have a public hearing mm -hmm. and I, I see no reason not to schedule that for the for the 12th. And uh, can I say something? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not actually able to follow the entire conversation, but I caught what Jamie said. Uh, if you think that there's any chance that we want to make changes before going to public hearing, you should not warn it tonight. The reason I chose you June 12th as, as a potential date is we have to warn that tonight. <clears throat> in order to do a hearing on June 12th, because our next meeting's on the 22nd, and that's too soon, so I chose the meeting after that. But if you think that we want to spend some time talking about changes that we want to make at the next meeting, then you should not warn the hearing for the 12th tonight. Does that make sense? It makes sense, but I, um, you know, I, I would, probably only want to make changes if I heard from people that they wanted changes and understood the reasons why, so, uh, I don't know. So you'd be comfortable going on the club, yeah. that's fine. Do you want more opportunity to? I'm, I'm just trying to un understand the intention of, uh, of the hearing a little bit. Um, and, and so what, what I'm hearing from the community is, uh, is a desire, um, to, to participate. Um, uh, there's, as <laughs> Jan will, will attest to, there's, there's been a, a long process, uh, for participation, but I also, uh, sympathize how, um, people can feel like they're late to getting up to speed or, um, uh, and, and I, I see value in having a, a hearing um, that offers the community the opportunity one last time to participate, but then uh, how do any changes after that get adopted or uh, when does the decision get made relative to uh, either us adopting them at that hearing or afterwards or uh, making a decision to go to uh, If you get out of public hearing, we want to make changes, then we have to make our changes and then hold another public hearing. Correct. Right, right. So, I mean, the, the, the purpose of a public hearing, be it the planning commissions or the select boards, is for the opportunity for the town people to have their say and of what it is that they have. If there's no changes, it can just go through a real easy. If, if, um, if the public hearing has some changes, then it has to go back to the planning, we have to make the changes, it goes back to the select board, and there's another public hearing for that to go, and then we come a vote, if you decide to go to the vote. So I mean, it's, it's an elongated process, but yeah, it can be done. Can, can I ask a procedural clarification? Um, the the one year mark when that starts is that relative to like if the select board sets a hearing and starts the next process does that are you still accountable to that one year yes. uh, September it date is, or okay. that if that the date is from the date that the public that the planning commission held its first, first hearing public hearing right and that's by state statute yep yeah mm -hmm. yeah just a point of clarification. Substantive changes require a second. Yes, uh, non substantive right. type votes. <laughs> That's Thank important. You. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think. Substantive. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, it is. I don't see the harm in and warning and having uh, the, the. Even if even if we review this document and decide that we want to make changes and subject ourselves to the uh, to the additional hearing 
there's a process for that, whether it's coming from us or coming from, from the town. And, uh, and everybody has had the opportunity to, to participate, I think, to Jan's, uh, to Jan's point. Um, and it sounds like they, they have, those who care have. Um, so I think it'd be appropriate to, to warn a meeting um, for, uh, for June 11th. 12. 12. I, just had a, I just had a quick question. That might be a can of worms. Um, I think, you know, it's a very large document, you know, like just as a lay person looking at it, I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to look at this. And then I have nothing to compare it to. Is there, is there any way, I know this might sound too big of a task, to take the old regs, compare them to the new regs, and just highlight the changes for oh, everybody? Honey. And then you probably have. I have a tracking change. You, okay. you will find it very difficult to read the tracking changes well, I'm trying to of find the a, existing a, a, a thing for the lay person of Callis resident. Because okay. it's like the dam. You know how the dam all of a sudden front, <laughs> and put it on front porch form. Well, what happened was that turned out to be an amazing vote and nobody knew. It's just trying to get the information out there. But right now it's a very confusing document. And I mean, and if there's any way to make a synopsis of the two, maybe there is already. I was going to say sorry. just a summary of what a the summary, changes and are. Yeah, uh, for front porch form, because you know what's going to happen. Well, Bam, this it's is gonna... a summary. I, I was going to work on a summary to give to the Curtis Pond Association membership about the Curtis Pond changes. Uh, and so I would be happy to help someone do a document like this and do it for the Curtis Pine stuff, so. Oh. Hmm. On the website where it's got the changes, uh, I think both on the Planning Commission site and the public notice about their hearing, there's a document with the track changes, which as she said, is very hard to read. There's another one called the Required Report, and that's a three-page sort of bulleted list of changes. Oh. And I, I think you'd find that. The actual yeah. language changes, the actual specific language. Uh, and how, does, how does the lay callous person find that? What you should be doing is doing strike and underline format. That's well, we should do. Well, well, it's in we the, have the original. Yeah. The, the, the original before we had our first document. And then we've been working on that. So you realize we have tracking versus tracking versus tracking. And, and we have to do several. So we now we go by the date on the file to, so that we know what we're working with. Uh, we have a track change between what we had on our public hearing and the changes that we have made now. But we also have something, I have on my computer multiple multiple copies. I just don't know that people would really want to read everything. But the final one should be in that basically legislative format. It so is. It is. Um, it is. Claire, Claire at Central Vermont put it in format. Oh. So those are your changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I, I, you know, I agree with Jim. It's, I honestly think it's impossible to read one of those documents and understand anything it does unless somebody tells you this is what it does. And and I, it was very helpful going to the meeting. That's another thing, Jim. Is is you know, anytime they have a public hearing, mm -hmm. it may not be your favorite thing to do on a Tuesday night, mm -hmm. but that's that's a good way to get information and things that pink, pique your interest. It happened with Marge heard something that she didn't know about. And um, so Jan, what I would say is if we wind up um, warning a public hearing for June 12, okay. front porch forum, front porch forum, front porch forum, summaries, uh, you know, offers to answer questions, all those kinds of things are really like the due diligence that we have to do to mm -hmm. try to get real public input mm -hmm. or no public input, that's okay too, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if Jan will help me, I'll write something to her and then I'll post it to, or let her review it and I'll post it concerning Curtis Bond. I don't want to give in to the entire document but I can at least do it. No. <laughs> but I do want to do that one. I was going to do that anyways but I would rather work with Jan to make sure what I'm stating is correct. So okay. Yeah I, and I, would, I would definitely want to see a summary of you know all the changes not just the Curtis Bond yeah. changes but yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. I, I'm not volunteering for that. <laughs> right. Was in that meeting that we were at, that was um, filmed, was it not, last week? And I found it super illuminating because I walked into it, and having tried to surf through the document and be like, yeah, like literally no idea what this means, but, but I walked away understanding what you were doing. So people can also go, is it on our website or just on the Orca website? 
It's on ORCA, and, and the first public hearing was also recorded. Okay. So you will go and see the first public hearing that we had and the presentation as much as possible with the maps, and, and the second one was too. So. Okay, so that for the community to mm -hmm. check those out, because it was fairly pithy and informative. So, so maybe in your front, well, at least one of your front porch form posts, include links to those ORCA recordings. Okay, so um, we are um, about 30, a half hour behind. Um, are we ready to make a motion to schedule a public hearing? I personally feel like scheduling it would induce action and then yep. worst case scenario, we need another public hearing. Well, no, that's probably not the worst case scenario. <laughs> 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 Yeah. yeah, I would make a motion to um, schedule a uh, hearing, uh, a, sec a select board hearing for uh, June 12th for the purpose of reviewing uh, <coughs> Jamie, would you do a quick look to make sure that the State of Town Hall is available that night? So that is a Monday night, which would be a regular select board meeting. And I think Anne, if Anne's still on the phone, we had discussed that. She, she asked historically how much the public hearings went on the select board meetings. John, maybe you can answer that too. Usually they were no more than an hour, if that, because a lot of people didn't come. So the, they held their public hearing, and then they had their regular scheduled meeting afterwards. Right. And I think that might be way, the way Ann was thinking about doing it. I don't it depends know. on who shows up. I remember we had a day when there was a previous chair of the Planning Commission. I don't know what time we scheduled, but it was a full night. So I don't know how controversial these are or how other just right. administrative things. Or, it's a little hard to predict. So we could have public hearings six to seven and then our regular meeting at seven, but there's certain risk that, we that run we over. Have, we'd run over. And what we, we do, do is we, we <coughs> would schedule the meeting at six and hoping to be over at seven, but we'd say it started at six and then on the agenda we'd say the select board meeting will commence after. after the close of the hearing and we wouldn't give it time. Otherwise you constrain yourself. Right. And, and, and if it goes really long, the public hearing goes really long at six o'clock and you guys are like wasted and you need to not have a select board meeting following, then you could just schedule a special select board meeting to take care of the agenda right. items that were scheduled for that night. Okay. okay, so we've got a motion on the table. Is there a second? A second. All right. Further discussion? I, I'd just be curious if Ann Winchester, if you can hear this conversation, if that was your intent when proposing this initially. Yes, but it, from what I heard, uh, I'm not catching everything, but it sounds like you said uh, we could have a special meeting. I do was thinking that it would not take the entire time and that we could have a special meeting if it did. But I was basing that on how many, how long the other hearings were. Mm -hmm. Assuming ours would be about three. Can I ask another clarifying uh, question? Um, we have that hearing. Would that be the hearing in which uh, the select board would adopt the ordinance, or would that be an action taken in another warned meeting? The select board would not adopt the ordinance if we were going to clear up for a vote. Um, oh, you mean if we decided to make changes? No. No. Um, no. I guess if I was thinking we would yeah. do that in another meeting, we decided to do that, but we can talk about that. Well, Jan, would you envision doing a similar presentation to what you did for the Planning Commission public hearing? I, I would assume that the Planning Commission would be there to make the presentation, and yes, I was assuming that. And I, does anybody remember, I was at the meeting, it was only last week, but 
Um, was it sort of an hour of presentation and then a half hour of discussion or no, half hour presentation? I think it's more 15 minute presentation okay. to 20, but we had a lot of questions come in right. in between, and it depends how the presenter controls it. If I say no questions until I'm done, type of thing, uh, or whatever, you know, I, I was pretty loosey goosey last week. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but but yeah, I think I would say 20 minutes presentation, no more than that. And if we started out with maps, depending on how we did it, but I, then I would give at least 30 to 40 minutes for public comment. Okay. Further discussion. All right. I'm gonna call the roll. Jordan. Yes. Gabrielle. Yes. Uh, Jamie. Yes. Anne Tulin. Yes. Anne Winchester. Yes. Okay. All right. So we have now scheduled a public hearing for June 12th. Thank you. And we did not, part of the motion was not warning a town wide vote on the proposal for sometime this summer. So we'll handle that once we have a better handle on things. <laughs> okay. Um, just to clarify, yep. June 12th, start date, start time is 6 p.m. Yes. For the public hearing, is yeah. that, okay. Yep. All right. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Revised livestock ordinance. Okay, so we have a revised livestock ordinance to regulate livestock running large. Um, and Winchester, can you hear me okay? Would you mind trying to summarize the most recent amendments? Sure. Um, I actually did not get away, but I will tell you that some of the things and some of the changes were in the sort of lawyers of the pieces are basically effective paragraphs. Okay. And are you there's still a lot of, there's a lot of flashing going on? We had to move the phone because we weren't hearing you very well. Okay. I turned you up, sorry. It wasn't graceful. Okay. So uh, in the second the second paragraph is entirely new and it's sort of indicating that um, that we in addition to just impounding them and worrying about what they're doing to um, it increases the neighbors effect that uh, we also feel that they need to be properly cared for and, and uh, give the proper shelter and food and water in order to keep them from at large. Um, in the third paragraph, uh, some of that is old language. We uh, I added ensuring that livestock are repeatedly found to be run at large or given proper fencing, food, water, shelter, and health care. To um, be sure that we have the authority to make sure they have the proper shelter, which we did not. Um, and that it's important to us that that it will be given proper health care. And uh, you'll notice we have it indicated that we get communicable diseases that we give ourselves the authority to make sure that. And then when you drop down to common expenses, uh, there's a, a clause at the bottom of the page there that says uh, that we uh, can authorize veterinary expenses I'm sorry, we can re recoup veterinary expenses being reasonably necessary to the life or health of the livestock, which the judge is not so sure we could do. Uh, very major change on the next page, livestock. Uh, we went back to the Jordan and I did some discussions about what should be included in livestock, and Joe pointed out that there was a definition of livestock in Action 50. So what I did was they took that definition and took out things that we don't want to include, like I think it said uh, farms trout, for example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let them run wild. Um, <laughs> but all the things here are things we want. 
the media action just added that, I mean, the language about sheltering, that we have the authority to ensure that these animals are properly sheltered. Uh, section 5 on the next page is entirely new compared to the old one. Um, and the one that says repeated violations. So this authorizes the select board to take further steps. I think most of this is the same as it was in the last version you saw, except that Joe added some lawyer type language to me here. In number two, I think he uh, cleaned up some of the language I had about escrow accounts to make it more um, uh, legal, I guess. Um, that's the basic change from there, and um, that's about it. Okay, so is there so this thing about um, for a uh, first offense, second offense, third offense? It's it, it if it happens once is like what happened. I mean, it's it's an offense if it happens once, right? Like at what point? does impoundment happen and um, when does the town take action? Like, do people get like a three strikes you're out or does this document talk about that or? Well, this is that, I made absolutely no changes to that one. So I am not sure what the impoundment is. Um, that is something I have to read it very carefully. I remember reading it several months ago. Uh, it, 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 I'm basing my changes on the decision that the judge wrote that, that pointed out inadequacy in our ordinance, and there was no um, no concern about this one as far as I could see. So I assumed it was working fine, and I didn't fix it. Okay, um, John, you were well. Just I I don't want to speak. Well, I can best speak to the most recent situation, very current situation too, um, and that case the the owner of the livestock it, it was a simple matter the owner of the livestock refusing to corral and keep the horses in the owner of the livestock said no i'm going to set my horses free no i my horses have a right they're they're mother nature's children or whatever so and and then that was what happened it wasn't just an idle threat that's what was in play every day so that was an easy one. I don't know if we had somebody who brought them in and they got out and they brought them in and they got out, but every time they made an effort. The way the ordinance is written, as long as the owner makes an effort, a real effort to impound them and um, serious effort, and if they happen to get out again and then they make a serious effort again, then, then that's okay. It's just when the owner refuses, you know. Right. So this language doesn't require that if somebody who has, you know, good fencing and a good system no. has one horse get out once, it institutes any action. It's for the owner who is either disinterested or a fairly irresponsible. So I only have other Ann. Quickie question. Are you oh, still me? Yes. Yes, you. <laughs> for okay. me. Um, under the repeated violation of the ordinance, do you think that prior to releasing impounded animals, the town should receive payment? The way it's written, it sounds like they will, they will pay, but in theory, the animals would be given back prior to that. So under the repeated violation of the ordinance, so under B, it says, following impoundment of livestock and release, the owner shall reimburse the town, but it wasn't clear to me if they shall reimburse prior to getting the animals back. But doesn't it, it says, and prior to releasing the livestock and the owner. Okay. Right? It follows the same language that the other one does, the livestock for repeated violations of this ordinance, and prior to releasing the livestock to the owner. The select board may impose additional uh, terms 
So uh, someone else had said that um, they have to pay prior to the meeting. Okay. Uh, where is that? I just want to make sure that was because, you know, like the court, so many things we weren't allowed to recoup, and so I appreciate this document very much. <laughs> okay, is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? So moved. Second. Okay, further discussion? All right, I will call the roll. Jordan. Yes. Gabrielle, yes. Jamie. Yes. Ann Tulin. Yes. And Ann Winchester. Yes. Okay. And that is adopted. Thank you for doing um, that, guys. Day of awesome. May. Do, do we need to, just a point of clarification, the copy we have doesn't have signature lines on it. Do we need yeah, to? Yeah, I, I have another ordinance online. Some of the I didn't find anything that said they could be done. Well, I would do the thing in the head that we adopted it. Yeah, if it's an ordinance, there doesn't need to have a signature on it, I don't think. So, it has to be a board. Right, I was just curious. I know some have signatures on them and some don't. Yeah, the address does. I don't see any reason why you needed to. Okay. Um, okay. Should this go to Barbara? To Rose. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Curtis Palm Dam. You guys come up. Come up to the front row. Yeah. Uh, in Winchester, we have Pauline and Marge and um, Rini. I guess. Rini. Hi, Rini. I'm Gabrielle. Nice to meet you. Do you know all of us? Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. All right. So, just to set the stage, um, the Curtis Palm Association has decided to recommend that we be prepared to issue an RFP for repair of the dam in September 2023 in anticipation of applying to the bond bank in November 2023 and doing the work in 2024. In addition, the Curtis Pond Association has reviewed an agreement delineating their responsibilities and select board responsibilities. This has been reviewed by the Town Bond Council. And by that, Ann Winchester, I think you mean our new Bond Council? I do. Correct. Okay. So that's the context. And what do you want to tell us? Hello. Um, it's with much frustration and disappointment that come the Colleen and the, the CBA has come to the conclusion that we can't get the the permits and everything ready in time to to construct in the summer. We are on a very small window. Um, have to be ready for June and have to be done by October. And the permits are taking longer. Uh, they're taking a long time, and they don't look. We had hoped a couple weeks ago. It's not like we were. We had hoped we might be able to get it in, but um, a few things have come up, and it's just not going to be doable. And so we're, we're we are disappointed and frustrated because we worked really hard to try to be able to do the construction this yeah. summer, but we're recommending that we wait until next summer to do the re. The, the fix, but we would still like to go out to bid as soon as we can. We, we threw a September date out there, but if we can do it earlier, that, that's fine with us. But that way we can make, we, the contractors will be able to um, get it on their schedules for mm -hmm. next year. So we don't want to wait until January and then go out to bid. If we can go out as soon as we can, as soon as we feel good that we can release the RFP that we would like, you know, we'd like to go out so that we can get people, someone lined up for next year. So that's kind of, and you, if you want any specific information about specific permits, the major issue is the spillway over the dam. Right now it's five feet. Um, 
dam safety and the engineers are recommending we increase it to 10 feet for safety reasons. The historical folks, although they haven't weighed in, they they would don't they would like to keep the spillway the way it is. So they have the, the two the three groups have to work out what we can do. Maybe they'll come back and say we only need five feet and we can go or we can go to ten feet, who knows? But it, I don't see that we can get that those agreements come together in time to do it for the summer. And that's not the only one. There's six permits and we do not have one in here. Yeah, but that's I the main I don't major. think it's at all for lack of bus driving. Um, it's the age old, too much work and not enough people, I think, in the engineering yeah. and the state. And we have had it as a high priority, but I think others have not. So that's the time. Yeah, and I don't mean that one to be the only one, like yeah, Kylie said, are, but that's, it, it, it's that's only the one of, it, Yeah, that's only one of six, but we do not have any in hand. Yeah, it's, so, so, so um, th there just hasn't been much response from the various agencies. There, there haven't been any other back and forth, other than the spillway design. When last we had a conversation with... Um, uh, du Bois and King, they were they were feeling like everybody. The questions were all, you know, promising, but it was just taking a long time to kind of work through the conversations and the clarifications. And it seems like that's still kind of the case. I think and it, was it, it was with the engineering too, though. Yeah, they were not getting there. Oh, okay. It wasn't just the state. Yeah, by, by yeah. any means. Yeah, the the sh the we have a couple permits: the shoreline and the endangered and threatened one that are, I would expect will have. Tentative, appro and a tentative approval by the beginning of June. But the problem from both the map, it's not really a problem, is that almost all of them, they have to go out and have a public hearing. So they have to, they can't just approve it and it's done. They've got to, they can approve it and say, but okay, now we have to open it up for the public to comment on it. Kind of like what we were dealing with earlier with the. So that's a DEC public hearing? Yes, after yes. they actually approve of they, it. But then, but it, you know, uh, Jeff Tucker was in, insinuating that he was waiting on Ben Green's changes when, and then I talked to Ben Green after a meeting I had uh, at, uh, with Fish and Game uh, for the Endangered Species, and he, he was, well, I'm waiting on. Boys and King. So there's a little bit of I'm waiting on this. No, I'm waiting on you. No, I'm waiting on you. But indeed, they're all understaffed. And, and you know, it's 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 a broken record these days. But it isn't. It seems to be in all the fields. So we've given up the ghost for this year. But we want to keep the momentum going and get the RFP out there and. We will certainly keep up on these permits. You know, we're not going to sit back and take the yeah. summer off or anything like that. And we um, and we do feel bad that we put a lot of pressure on you guys, but we did feel that it was we we put more, we we had put more pressure on the other yeah. folks too. But yeah. either we just um, just couldn't get it done. So. Mm -hmm. So um, thinking about a couple of things that um, I know Sandra was working on the bond application. Um, has she been informed? Do you know? Yes. So, so, uh, okay. Do you yes. want to hear from Anne first? No. I, I was, I, when you guys were finished, I was going to ask a clarifying question. I on do. behalf of Sandra, our, our town treasurer, when she saw this on the agenda, she said, I have been working feverishly on this at May 15th deadline. So she, her question for tonight is, does that mean she no longer has this May 15th deadline? Uh, I already wrote to her about that. Um, and, and I do want to clarify that this is a recommendation. It's not a decision. Oh, okay. We wanted to make a decision with all of the group, which is why we haven't really notified anyone because we didn't feel that we were the ones to make to, everybody you guys need to vote on it it's just our recommendation mm -hmm. so yeah okay so there's there's working on the um there's working on the bond application there's also the immediate immediate thing other than the permits and everything else was the transactional legal documents of the um the landowners, where are we at with that? 
that's going to be in Maloney's yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, office, I yeah. think. Yeah. Right. And Tom. Mark, Mark who's not here, I think Mark and Thomas Maloney will be the principals there. Okay. Now, I can tell you that Thomas, Thomas is working on those, but he slows down, given that we're likely to go down the project. Right, and one of the things we, we still want to keep pushing, but it might not be have to push for May 15th. And, and we could not tell people not to do stuff until right. we all discussed it and decided. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, is there any world in which the May 15th bond application gets, the per gets us the permits faster? No. So then we should definitely relieve Sandra of the harried rush to, unless she's almost done, I don't know. It's, it's, my it's, understanding from previous conversations is that you can do the bond application and after you receive it within a certain amount of time, say the project's been delayed, we want to push this to the next bonding amount. Um, I don't know if that increases or you know decreases your standing with the bond bank and how they're viewing your project. Um, but I don't know if there would be. You know, I think the goal would be to get in the definitely get in the November pool so that we had the funds available to start first thing in the spring once it's dry enough. Um, whether or not we we push and get in the first one and then delay or or delay the bonding, I don't know strategically. I don't know how the bond bank works, but what we found with the permits was we put them in and then we found out more and acted on that and then right. found more and acted on that. So <laughs> I don't know how the bond bank works. So I wouldn't. I'm not advocating for May versus November, but I'm, I'm advocating that we keep right. going on this. So. Well, I, I believe it's the it, it's the May application for the November pool, or is it uh, the May for July? May for May July, for July November and then for February. November, or November for February. Gotcha. Great. So, so we we would want the money by February. Um, because potentially the work can start, is it June 1 or June 30? June, June 1. Um, so we definitely wouldn't want to wait till the, the next spring deadline. Yeah. Which um, is May 15th. Right. But, yeah, I don't know enough about it to know. It, it seems to me, like Marge was saying, you learn a lot from folks once they get your first application. And so I don't know how far along Sandra is in the process and what, what her feeling on the matter is. Um, I talked with her about it this morning. I, don't, I also don't know how far along she is. She's been given lots and lots of projects and she's yeah. prioritized them. So this one had the May 15th mm -hmm. deadline, but it sounds like maybe Anne has talked with Sandra since I talked with Sandra this morning. Is that correct, Ann W? Yes, that's correct. Do you know how far along she is, or you want to fill us in with your conversation with her late after I talked to her this morning? It was simply an email exchange in which she said, hey, what's going on? And I told her what's going on, and she said, uh, you know, pending the decision tonight, I think you can slow down. And work on other projects. She and she didn't indicate how far along she was with it. Would you repeat that, please? Oh, how far along did Sandra say she was with the project? We did not talk about that. Okay. So the good news is that still as of today, it was high on her priority list. So it's not like she's gone off of it yet. I guess the question that I would have for, and Sandra would probably know this more, better than anybody, uh, would be how uh, 
how useful is the work that she's doing now or how applicable is the work that she's doing now to uh, an application for the November slash February distribution. So um, if, if she is close or if she's had it prioritized, uh, my understanding of the bonding process is that you can withdraw it before it's in the pool. So if something significant happens uh, between May 15th and the closing of the pool in June, July, um, that, that, that somehow changes the price, brings into some, some major consideration, not that, it, not that it would, it doesn't seem, I think it's encouraging that it doesn't seem like there's anything that's being flagged at this point. So it, it would seem like if she's pretty close to it and they're, um, uh, and it's all very applicable to, to work that would otherwise have to be done in November, then we just kind of keep her on the task. And if we need to withdraw before the pool closes midsummer, we can do that. Right. I this probably isn't necessarily a decision that we have to vote on. So perhaps the best bet would be one of us and I'm happy to do it, or if somebody else wants to, to have a conversation with Sandra in the next day or two um, and get her take and just lay this out and say, the goal is to have the money in the, you know, November, February pool strategically, you know, both strategically for the project and realistically for Sandra's time. Is it better to keep going and do this fresh application or is it better to, to get in the next round? And, and sort of leave it in her court a little bit because she she's done it before and <laughs> knows more about the strategy than we do. Yeah, she did say she's working way, way, way more than 20 hours a week. Yeah. So um, I have the feeling she might have other priorities to put forward um, if it's not an imminent May 15th, which is a week <laughs> from today. Oh my gosh. So, okay, um, so what do folks think? Do we want to authorize, um, uh, Anne asked me to put together a, uh, a motion, and I just wrote something up, and you guys can choose to use it or not use it. Okay. What I, I gave as a, a motion, approval for the select board and the CPA to continue preparing a request for a proposal with all its accompanying documents and permits for the first time the repair project. The RFP will not be released until the votes, until they, they, vote, they vote their approval at the early select board meeting after preparation and the review is completed. But with the goal of no later than I put October 1st, we can put anything, we can put in August 1st, September 1st, whatever you want. I don't know if it's too wordy, but I did something to begin with. So, I didn't make a copy for everybody. So. Okay. Well, there's also, there's also the MOU to um, the agreement and sign. That's a, that would be a separate yeah. thing. So, okay. I, this is for concerning for. I think what we're recommending is we don't worry about <coughs> trying to get it done this year, but we want to keep pushing this and put it out to bid as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. If that's too wordy or not wordy, you know, you can... So I guess the, the part of this conversation we haven't had yet is about the RFP, um, which, which um, Thomas Maloney has looked at. Um, there was a little bit of back and forth. Did, did his suggestions went to... Went to Jeff Tucker. Jeff Tucker, and Jeff, Jeff Tucker was okay with it. But we and haven't made... We, we wanted to find out what you guys wanted to do um, tonight before we right. actually make the, any changes to the... The biggest package. change, going by memory here, but the biggest change was whether or not the RFP ties the select board, requires the select board to take the minimum, the lowest bid, or gives... Um, 
Thomas recommended that we change the language to give us a little more flexibility on which, which um, proposal to accept, which bid to accept, based on other factors than just the price, um, which made sense to me. Yeah, that's a good change. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I, and I think you all saw those, the other changes were pretty small. Um, so I think in this motion we should. Um, the right to accept or reject any bids. Right. So sort of it, sort of authorize Jeff Tucker to to make the changes that um, Maloney recommended. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if we have to have another meeting or if we're ready to say as soon as the RFP is finalized, we are okay putting it out. And, and I'm not 100% sure, do, we, do you guys need to make a motion and vote on it, but I, we all wanted to make sure everybody was in agreement about, about what we just discussed, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it makes sense. There are no comments, and the and the bond application is a week from today. Um, so, yeah, I think we have to slow down because of the permits. And uh, sorry <laughs> for you guys and all the work you've done. Well, um, but it does seem promising, also, that it's just going to be well lined up for next year. Yeah. And there are some theories on whether it might it might be more expensive trying to push it this year versus next year because mm -hmm. um, but and then there's theories that well it's a wild card yeah, yeah it's a wild card, card could go up twenty percent yeah so yeah. we are taking a risk but um, well we're not taking it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. we're not we're not opting for this. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know whether we need a vote or not, but um, yeah. I guess the question is, well, I mean, I don't think we need a vote to say yes. Jeff Tucker should make the changes to the RFP. At some point, we'll need a vote to put out the RFP. Right. And the question is whether or not we do that tonight, pending those changes being made, or if we wait. I don't know what our process should be in. I feel in like we should the, like have the RFP in our documents if we're going to vote on it. So I'd I'd like to see the changes get it, made and next. yeah, have it, okay, have mm -hmm. it have it on the agenda. Okay. And one thing to think about also is at the time when we make those, when you guys vote on that. Uh, do we have to make sure that the permits are all the way through approved or have kind of, we've gotten a blessing um, from the, uh, but we don't have the full permit because of the public time frame. So there'll be some. I think that my understanding of the RFP is we can kind of put all kinds of conditions in there subject to financing and bond approval subject to uh, final permitting approval. You know, I think as a, as, as a matter of just kind of due diligence, at this point, it seems like we have a, a little uh, time. CPA is recommending that we consider putting out a, an RFP in September for uh, for the next year, um, and uh, we need a, I, you know we're in a holding pattern with the permit, so I, I think it, it seems like we have some time to make the changes, dial in the RFP, and and sometime between now and September uh, decide whether because the the tricky situation with the RFP is as soon as we accept it, make a decision about making it public, then that starts a clock on a, on a pretty formal process. So if, if, we're, if we're going to wait until we have a little bit more clarification or just start getting some of the permits in, um, then we might as well see how that kind of unfolds over the next couple of months and then we're in no worse position to get the RFP out. Um, I, I would suggest that the one thing we let the parties decide what to do about the spillway. Because that's right. going to be 
Um, that could be a design. That change. could be a design change. Mm. But that that decision, and so we don't issue it until they've worked that through. Not necessarily that they approved sure. it, but you know, just verbally say, "Hey, we've got this figured out, and here's the design change." Who are the parties again? Well, uh, the the um, dam safety and the, the, um, Du Bois and King have a design with it ten feet. The historical groups have right, 10, ten feet wide, ten, ten feet, feet high, ten feet wide. Okay. Which, is wide now, which, which is five and a half. Which is what it is. They want it wide. Oh, okay. And which would change the appearance. Uh -huh. So and it's historical preservation is concerned. So okay. if we if they can work it out so that they can come to an agreement on how wide it should be, then we can feel pretty confident we can move forward because it sounds like seven and a half. But I mean, until that gets resolved, even if it's not on paper, I think we're not going to know what the, the design is right. going to really be. So it seems like the only action we're really considering tonight is if we want to sign this official the agreement, MOU. which is sort of an update to the MOU that last select board signed. So forget my worry. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Um, have, has everybody reviewed this updated MOU? Satisfactory? Right. And, every, and just so you know, all of the executive board on the CPA saw the resolution and made comments. And so there everyone is, <coughs> the first time, it's, Association Executive Board has approved it as well. Who's the president? Colleen. Colleen. We okay. need the secretary and the treasurer. Mm -hmm. and, we, and, and then we have, what is it, seven of us? Okay, so do we need a oh, motion Jane. for me to? <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> She's gone to the other side. <laughs> I'll uh, make a motion that uh, authorizing uh, Gabrielle to uh, sign the uh, agreement with the CPA on the Curtis, Curtis Dam. Second. Do we need within seconding? Yes, dude. Is there a second? Oh, um, I thought you were seconding. Okay. <laughs> I'm seconding. Okay, sorry. Further discussion? <laughs> Is this the agreement slash MOU? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's an agreement. It, yeah. Oh, and I did. We did ask that it's become an agreement rather than MOU because the old MOU still exists. Correct. And this is just an agreement between the two groups. It's not the pathway to get the Curtis. Pond. It's kind of like who does what and all that. Yeah. So rather than confusing the public. Confusing everyone, we might to the old one be referred to the MOU and this be an agreement. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. All right, I'm going to call the roll. Jordan? Uh, yes. And Gabrielle, yes. Uh, Jamie? I am going to abstain. Okay. And Ann Poulin? Yes. Ann Winchester? Yes. Okay, I'm signing it. And I can hand it to Colleen. Yeah. Can I um, see it? I will accept that. The town office needs a copy, so I need to be able to scan it. Colleen it has to sign it, and then it will be Oh, okay. Out. Gotcha. All right. And what are we doing next? Which mess? Okay. 7.15, uh, 45 minutes late. Three reports. <laughs> um, roads. Jamie and Anne. Might I have a quick thing on the water that just came up this afternoon? Um, Next year we call it weird. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to see that document before I can start typing on the next item. I don't know what yeah. this agreement yeah. thing is. Okay, yes. sorry. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Pausing. I'm sorry. If you can just give me two seconds. Oh, I think I have a copy of this in my thing. So it's just called the agreement. Yeah. The agreement. The agreement between CPA. The agreement dated 5 8. Thank you. Yeah, the agreement dated by the. Thank you very much. I apologize. Okay. All right. So quickly, um, we had had the water 
test it once they clear filtration. A group that's done it before had done it, um, but they only checked for bacteria specifically, like to see if there was any. It wasn't uh, tested for whether it was hard or any other things, just um, if there was bacteria. And there was not. Um, the guys are still uncomfortable drinking it. I know earlier today, someone from the East Palace Fire District, because I can't recall at the top of my head, we had looked at the cost of doing further testing um, for some of those things that other people might want in a potable water situation. Um, and the East Calais Fire District, Bob, the guys had come in and talked to me earlier today and seen it on the thing and said that they might be able to, they do regular testing of our systems and they would be willing to add on, throw in a test for them as well um, under our banner, which might be more economical than going to the other folks. I'll just okay, thank you. I'll just add thank that I spoke with John about this on Saturday, and um, he said that regardless of what tests say, it tastes bad and they don't want to drink it, and they're perfectly happy continuing to stop at Walmart once a week where one of them goes anyway and pick up a jug of water for the shop. That's what Brooke Bruce told me too. They're like, I don't care what the test results come back, we're not drinking that water. And the filtration so. system is pricey. It would be expensive it and, and it, they're it, not gonna use it. Right, and it might not improve the taste and the taste is the problem. So yeah. I think if that's the solution they're happy with, I don't see any reason to, we know the water is safe, which feels like a due diligence. And well, I, want to, I, I asked if it was tested for metals because I've had a personal experience where our water was undrinkable and unusable because of metals. Yeah. And it might be I mean, contaminants from fuel right. and oil over the mm -hmm. years or something. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I think as long as the overall safety bacteria, that might be something to discuss more um, later. If we are looking for potability but are looking for even exposure, physically and whatnot, to washing their hands, if there's things in there that might be problematic. Um, but if we're cool doing the, because they like the bottle, $6 a jug, it lasts like a week, so. I, I just don't see a need to keep testing and spending money on systems if it's not gonna, it's not their desire. Tegan's with the East Calais Water District. Can you answer if their test would include testing for minerals? Do you know? I think we ask. They they offer all sorts of testing mm -hmm. options, and we sort of say we want this, that, and the other thing tested for. Uh, the company is Endyme, though. You can look them up. That's where yeah. we go. Yeah, we'll use Endyme, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the only game in town. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> where <laughs> I, it, it seems like a big burden to me going and getting bottled water from Walmart and John's like, we don't care, we don't mind doing it. So he just blew it off and said, we'd rather just, we just as soon get bottled water. They did. And I grab it when I can and I can carry the jugs. So mm -hmm. I can lug it in there. I was like, I can do it. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's doable and, and it's, I think, relatively cost effective for the, the price because they get the reusable jugs. And that's what they seem to want. Yeah, it is what they want. Okay. Um, Road signs. Uh, radar yeah. signs. We're stuck with those signs unless we find someone to buy them. Right. So the, uh, the road signs, the company has a no return policy. And so we, we do not have the opportunity to return the signs. That's what Eric Wolf told the guy. Keith Cuban. Mr. K. Keith Cuban. I've looked on their website. They, their website doesn't say they have a no return policy. But, but Mr. Wolf knew that we were wanting to return these signs. So I know. But that I spoke with the road crew this morning. Um, and they had said it's pretty standard fare with something that involves electronics that is not returnable. It's like, well, thanks for letting us know earlier. <laughs> like, I've been haggling with this poor guy. He's probably like, don't you know how this works? 
but with those signs, they were supposed to send some callers to increase the stability, which they have it. I re-emailed him today. They can weld them to the base. I mean, basically, I think originally they were hoped to be movable and pragmatically they're going to have to be basically permanent, I think. And even with that, without the collars, the technique to keep them upright is going to automatically start to weaken it um, because they would have to bore through the thing to keep it in the base. So the collar would help its longevity because it really don't want to have something that pricey put it up and have it fall over in a year or something. And are they so unresponsive that you can't just get them to be like, hey, you have a no return policy, which you didn't tell us right off the bat, and we've been spending all this energy, so can you give us some collars? Like, is that a thing? That they, like, I, I the emailed him today because he had said, yes, we have them on order, and yes, and I was hoping he would respond, and then I could also let him know it would have been really nice if he had responded to either the multiple phone calls between Jamie and I and or emails that Jamie and I had sent about returning the items. Because there was a lot of spent energy that yeah. we didn't have to spend. Yeah. So the callers are still on back order? I have no idea. Okay. I but they, were, but they were already purchased, right? So they... It was an add-on because they weren't, I think, in part of the original order, but they are something that is necessary to keep it stable because it's very tall and top-heavy. And so how many do we have? Hmm? How many do we have, Radar Science? Jamie probably knows better than me. Uh, I was just trying to pull it up. I don't have it right handy, but um, I believe the... The select, the, the original order was for either four or five that were considered permanent installations and then two that were supposed to be mobile. And the two that were supposed to be mo portable are slightly shorter poles with slightly smaller signs. Um, and the that's what we ordered and that's what we got. And the original proposal for the order, if you look back at the select board minutes, outlined where they were supposed to go, um, which we could revisit or we could just go with. Um, would they be used for the traffic study? Are they compliant with what they would use for the, the CVRPC traffic study? The um, regional planning uses a different type of device, they do the Strip, strips across, across the road. The road. This gets you uh, to the information um, though because but, you can believe Right, this would give us the information we'd need to be called a traffic study. Um, so I, my feeling at this point, you know, the other option that's come up is there are, uh, DOT has a sort of municipal roads Craigslist. It's going to say Facebook marketplace. Classified. So it's, it's been suggested that we theoretically could try to resell them. Um, I think we wouldn't recoup because what town's going to buy them at full cost without uh, the warranty or whatnot. Um, at, at this point, I feel like they're useful, they should be installed. Yeah and we should just start using them. Um. Yeah, I, my understanding of the situation is we've identified both in our last meeting and the previous select board, identified the roads that are of the greatest need right. of attention um, and enforcement. And I know, you know, it, it seems sufficient to try to gain some sort of mobility, but how, how often are we actually gonna move them? Um, and yeah, it, yeah, we won't. It, well, we won't. <laughs> and so I, I don't think focusing on that mobility. Let's let's get them installed. We we ordered them. That they're going to provide really good information. You know, I I like the course of action that we're we're on with the road study and assessment of the speeds. But these are going to be a valuable tool in us having conversations with. Uh, uh, the sheriff's department in the meantime to enforce the speed limits that are already on the roads. Well, who's looking at the data? 
does somebody, does one of us have to look at the data? I does think it's the, something we can pull off of. Um, Toby has the app on his phone. So there's already two in East Catalyst, I think, mm -hmm. one in each direction. Yep. And there's yeah, one in Maple Corner at the bottom of the hill. Is that still there? Uh huh. Okay. Um, and Toby can just walk up to it and push buttons on his phone and download the data and use it from there. Yep. All right, well, good to know. That's so. the update. And yeah, I, I say like the sooner they get used, the less of a thing they'll be of like, oh, what a drag this whole thing was. And right. let's just, yeah, get it going. Um, I just, did you come to speak about speed? Uh, I know. Well, you're listening because I wanted to make sure you guys are still on the same speed limit as I was, kind of you know, going in that direction, so to speak. Okay, because uh, we had had folks come in earlier, so we, we had a lengthy chat earlier, but I yeah. knew that was probably why you were here, so I wanted no, to make sure you got a chance. I figured you said 7.15, so I figured it'd be a little late. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope that you continue what you're doing. It sounds like you're on the right track, all these partners, but you know what. Uh, basically, you're going to continue with the speed studies, uh, and uh, I'm hoping that if you, I don't know who the other people were except the guy in front porch for them, but I think it, each road is individual, and where you can go fast on some roads, we call it fast, uh, other roads you shouldn't. I did my own personal, I drove down Lightning Ridge Road today, and as you go on the top of the hill, 30 is doable. You get above Tom Ricardo's 25 is, is safe. Uh, because the kind of road narrows there, it's sharp turns, go down past my house, which is uh, all about a mile from the bottom of the hill. And you know, it's, it's, it's wider there, but 25 is a very safe speed. It's, you know, I didn't step on the gas, I didn't go like a crazy person. Um, that's, what I'm, that's an anecdotal evidence, but I'm, I'm saying the speed limit should be reduced there. I think, uh, I'm hoping that the, the, when they do the study that, uh, <clears throat> let me put my potholes on there, quite frankly. <laughs> when the potholes were there this last couple of weeks, I had a woman stop me on where I was walking, she said, does the town own a crater? And I was going to no, It was raining a lot, yes. <laughs> but the point, the point being is, the better, the, the smoother the road, the faster they go, and it's sort of common sense, so. Uh, I hope that uh, the way to the road is pretty bad, but I didn't test. <laughs> okay, any other road updates? Can, can I just, may I please just, I want to make sure you all know this is Mike Lornian. Mm -hmm. um, he is a retired attorney. He's a Callous Justice of the Peace and the board, the chair of our Board of Civil Authority. Ah. So, Michael, this is your new select board and your new town clerk. I know. <laughs> Great. Sounds like uh, we may be calling on the Board of Civil Authority <laughs> in the near future. So I, was... I, was joking a little bit, but I just want to make sure to continue the speech today, that's all. Because yeah. I, 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 my personal crusade, I think I've lived there 28 years and it's, it's turning into a boss right down here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. Got it. Okay, well, thanks for coming. Um, all I right. I have another road update. Okay. That's what that's. Um, late last week, um, I got a visit from John and Dana, who had gotten a call um, about a town-owned wooden bridge on Stillbrook Road. Uh, <laughs> services uh, three houses, I believe. Um, there was a chimney fire at one of the homes last week. Oh. Um, of the three fire trucks that responded, uh, Toby was the only driver uh, that felt safe crossing the bridge in a fire truck. Um, and he only did it because he knew a town truck had gone over it recently. Um, on, after that report from the fire department, uh, the road crew went over and scraped enough gravel off the bridge to get a good look at it and found a significant amount of rot um, in places that you could, I mean, they showed me pictures. You could put your foot right through the uh, planks that you're supposed to drive across. Uh, it was deemed quite dangerous. I hadn't 
extensive conversation with Toby about it, and that was his uh, opinion as well. Um, they went to a rough cut lumber sawmill that they've used before, whose name I can't remember. Fontaine. Fontaine, thank you. It's just there today. Um, and got an estimate uh, for materials. It was in the ballpark of uh, $2,100. Um, and I discussed with Toby and approved the expenditure. So they ordered the lumber. Uh, they will do the work themselves for the repair. The, the steel beams that support the whole thing are intact and safe. Um, so they're replacing uh, like a few long pieces that go the whole way and then all the crosshatch boards. Um, there was a, a discussion about rough cut versus pressure treated. Uh, pressure treated might last a little bit longer, but it would be significantly more expensive and a long delay to get in the dimensions that they need. Um, and so Toby and I and uh, John and Dana all agreed that going with the rough cut was the way to go. So and that, wouldn't pressure treated release carcinogenics into the brook? Not really if it's suspended and not, um, not submerged, okay. um, but pressure treated, probably know more about this than I do, is really um, the, the protectant is designed for wood that's going to be submerged. And so the value in a suspended bridge is significantly less than it would be if it was permanently submerged in water. Okay, well, thank you for doing that. Um, all right, documents and emails, Jordan. Uh, well, the office, uh, I believe, has all of their uh, emails set up, and there still might be a couple of lingering uh, training opportunities for folks who are going to have uh, office computers uh, and the uh, applications installed on their uh, on their computers, so I, I assume that those are kind of getting worked through and oriented um, as as needed. Do you guys have any comments on how things are going or specific needs? No, the only thing that's complicated is keeping track of who's onboarded and who's not. Yeah, yeah. definitely made a few emails. At least I know I have emails. Someone half an hour later gone. Do you actually have that email? <laughs> 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 Uh, so that uh, has been kind of top of mind for me over the uh, over the last week, and uh, and I think refreshing that list and having kind of a directory. There were certain accounts that we decided to uh, to to table um, that were at the bottom of that list, and and just within the last day, uh, Jamie and I were talking about maybe wanting to add one of those back on there. So I think we just kind of need an updated list. Um, to to circulate uh, the last bit were I think the um, select board uh, emails uh, earlier this morning I circulated uh, the credentials for the select board uh, logins and um, I think the best way to go through it would just be to allow everybody to explore the email access and doing that through the web browser and uh, applications. And then as we kind of get used to the ecosystem, uh, uh, start to explore trying to get some of the uh, desktop uh, applications going. Um, the other big thing to sort out is going to be the shared documents, which um, uh, they're before we just start dumping things on there, uh, right now, the way that everything's been uh, set up, uh, everybody is in the same organization, uh, but that's not necessarily how we want the shared documents to work. Uh, the select board documents should be uh, reserved for the select board group, and, uh, and there might be some cross-pollination there, but uh, I'm still kind of working through with Holland how, how to set that up, and uh, I was just this week, or at the end of last week, given um, the rights to start manipulating those things, um, which I previously didn't have. So 
now my account allows me to set those things up and I'd like to do that before we just start migrating content on there because it could be kind of messy to untangle um, if we just so if we can kind of keep working with the uh, Google Drive for the select board uh, shared documents um, and if anybody has an issue logging in to their email account certainly let me know but at this point I think everybody has what they need to start accessing their emails and we can start using those is that I'm in mine. Ann and Ann, are you in yours? Have you tried? Um, I was going to try up here on the internet. It's not strong enough to get the app to download, so I could work on it tomorrow. Today was kind of jamming prior to coming here, so but I feel confident you gave very detailed instructions. <laughs> Even I could follow them. So, I think I'll uh, so one of the things that I'll just kind of reinforce. Uh, so again, the recommendation is to at the moment. Uh, just go through a web browser for accessing Outlook. Um, the web browser use uh, requires authentic two-step authentication. Um, so you'll need a, ideally it's easiest if you have a smartphone, download the authentication app, make sure that it's the Microsoft one. Uh, if you look it up in, uh, in either of the app stores, um, uh, and then sign into that first. Um, you'll only need to do that the first time. Uh, right now, it's not, it's not an enforced policy. However, it's coming down the pike and it's not gonna be something that we can uh, change. Uh, it will likely only be applied to web browser usage. So we might wanna have a conversation later on about um, uh, about desktop usage uh, of the apps to kind of alleviate some of that pressure. But at the moment, um, you just need that authenticator for initiating the first sign in, um, and then you'll be good to go. Jordan, do you have passwords for your email accounts, I'm assuming? Yes, uh, so I have passwords for, uh, the temporary passwords for just the uh, select board accounts. Is there a pattern to those temporary passwords? We were never given any password. Holland specifically said we didn't need passwords. It says we can't get into OneDrive without a password. And there was something, I was going to put my picture on there so that I have a picture of my email address. And he's like, what's your password? And I was like, but he set it up when I was not in the office and I just haven't gotten him on the phone to ask him. So I didn't know if it was like, yeah, everyone's initial password is 1257 whatever. And I, well, so there was, there are two steps. So uh, the Holland, um, through an application that RB had, um, sent a link that gave you access to a temporary password uh, that was, um, that, that basically had a, a timer on it to use it. Um, so I went through that same thing and had to reset a password, um, but the rest of them were static because they didn't go through that. Um, so you can, if you don't have a password or for whatever reason it's not syncing with your account and giving you access, I would reach out to Holland. Okay. Um, at the moment, yeah, so I, I haven't been given access to all of the passwords. I don't think that that would likely be appropriate. Um, no, it's more just like for, for the onboarding, it's like everyone's password is if, something simple. Sometimes they do that for the initial, and then like they welcome, change it the right. end. Yeah, welcome five, everyone does that, and then they're on. But I, I, I emailed Colin today, and I hadn't heard back from him, and I just thought I'd check it. Yeah, I, so the other part of it is that I don't have um, access to like the back end administrative portal, um, uh, and RB does, uh, and and they can very easily make changes to those like in real time. So if anybody is having access issues for one reason or another, let me know, or the office should feel free to reach out to uh, to RB directly to try to get passwords reset. Um, that should be pretty easy for them. So sh should we not individually, like me or the rest of Slack board, should we not reach out to RB, we should reach out to you? Uh, I'm, I'm, no, I'd be happy to give you their contact information. Mm -hmm. You can, you can, I think they probably prefer that, uh, that I'd be a point of contact, but if yeah. it's something like that, I can't, I can't do anything about it anyway. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to connect you with them. Um, if it's just like basic training and troubleshooting and trying to sort out what we 
what we do or don't want to use from like features uh, or how to set things up, like I can help with that. But if it's more technical, like resetting a password or something like that, that'll have to be RB and, and we'll just make sure that we have a point of contact. Should I reach out to them for the webmaster email credentials? Yes. Okay. Yep. So starting tomorrow, are all four of you and, and, the, and Winchester included all five of you now using your new palacevermont.gov email addresses? I we will should, be. We should wait for Ann to learn. Like, I'm not, I'll be on by tomorrow. I just, I, the internet doesn't work here well enough to pull down the app okay. that you have to use to do the thing, but. Can you send us like a celebratory, I'm in, so we know that you're in. I will do my best, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, but that, but then the other three, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're, we're looking for I'm specific in. from everybody. Yep. You're in, yeah. you're in, you're in. Yes. Okay, cool. what about the Callus, I mean, how about the select board at callusvermont.gov? Um, so that's just a distribution list, uh, and that goes to all of those accounts. So all of those accounts are, are, are active and receiving emails. It's just a question of whether or not people are signing in and checking them. So they, we all should be at this point. Um, the distribution list uh, just goes to all select board members and, uh, and you, I believe. Okay. Um, but is but We're is just it, asking so we can tell people. Is it is it activated? Is it ready? Can we yes. put it on the website? Yes. Okay. What about the listers and the zoning administrator? We'll have to talk to them to see. Well, I'm just asking if they're if they're mm -hmm. up and running. Last I Peter Jordan would so have. all of the I, I don't know if the individual listers or uh, the zoning administrator are using their account. I know that uh, Holland has uh, tried to spend time to get them uh, acquainted with them. They, they do work um, as they've been proposed uh, and there haven't been any changes. So I guess at this point, I would say we should we should ask them specifically. Well, and go public with them and say they've been activated and they are public. And if you need assistance with um, getting access or getting uh, oriented, then then they should no. they should ask. Now is the time to ask because we're gonna we need to do we can't just kind of keep trickling them out. That's not gonna work very well. Right. It seems like we need a a public notice on the home page of the website. Yeah. That, that lists them all. And I know that, I have mixed feelings. I know that there's hesitation among some of us about putting that, well, I don't know. Now that we have these individual ones, are each select board members, should, should I list each select board members on the website? I know I would like to list mine because I'm still getting lots of, right, people want to email me about something on the select board and they know my personal email or they're able to find my personal email from Front Porch Forum. I would think that our so town ones would be a personal public access. Personally, I would want email. my town one to be listed on the town so that people are more likely to use it instead of my personal one. I don't know how other people feel about that. No, I would rather um, have mine up there, but... I, I was thinking that maybe um, Barbara could... We could just all go through the select board email and Barbara could be looking at them and heading them off to the right person. Um, but, uh, Jordan, would we even be able to respond to something that comes through the select board email? Or would we have to do that with our own email, the way it's set up now? Uh, I would have to check with Holland to see how the right now, like the, the, the default uh, dis way a distribution list is going to work is that anytime any, anybody, any one of us responds to that, it's going to send out uh, an, an email to the whole group and it's just going to treat it as, as an instance. So, uh, you know, I think it, it's a it's a good one to have public, but it, for open meeting reasons and just for continuity and conversation, um, it would we we wouldn't want to be responding to that or using that for for kind of broader communication. That, that's what I was going to suggest. That Barbara be sure that she's 
sends the email of the appropriate people, which in some cases would be a book. And then we then would only respond with our own personal email so that we don't wind up with these complicated threads that you have to read through 15 emails to remember what the point was. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> so, does the so people, uh, in my case, I wasn't thinking of giving them my personal email. But people would email the select board address. And then Barbara would look at them as they came in and decide who needed to get these. In some cases, it was probably all of the chair. In some, it might be the road commissioners. In some, it might be all of us. And then she will forward them to the appropriate people who would then use their personal email to respond. They would not respond through the select board email. You're talking about our personal select board yes. emails? Yes, I am. Sorry. Okay. Your personal, our personal, like so, so many my personal. But weren't you saying, Jordan, that if somebody, if if Rose emails select board at calvesvermont.gov, it doesn't just go to a select board to an inbox that's just that address, Those but rather it goes to all of our personal select board addresses. Yeah, it's a, so it's a it's a distribution. So it'll. It'll go out to everybody who's on the distribution list. There right. might be a way that we can turn off how, like, the people's ability to respond uh, to that. So it may not be something that uh, th that it only pushes and it doesn't receive uh, emails right. back, or that we could receive emails back to. Um, I'm not quite sure how that would work, but. Um, but we, we could treat it as a dedicated inbox. I, I just think that there's some efficiency in having, so that for instance, if, if Rose wanted to circulate the minutes all at once and didn't necessarily want to send, but the, you know, there's not many of us, so I, I don't know that it necessarily needs, needs to be treated as a distribution list. It, it needs to be maybe a generic uh, uh, repository for emails that are just kind of coming in from either outside organizations or gets, you know, subscribed to certain things or for the public to email into it, then there's some sort of filter um, that that we could set it up so that it is a dedicated inbox that is within Barbara's a list of accounts and it would keep things separate and she could filter them. But that that's kind of uh, Kind of a conversation, a, a workload conversation that we'll have to have with Barbara. Yeah, that I don't know. That seems a little onerous to me. That's um, what I was thinking. And I, and I, I, I just micromanage. She has to micromanage. Right. I just know from my personal, the way I operate. You know, be before I was on the select board. I'd be much more likely to, to go and look at the list of select board members and say, oh, I know Jordan, we have this connection, I'm going to email him, and might feel more comfortable sending that email to one person who I know versus to a generic email that goes to the whole board, which feels more, I don't know, more official and a little daunting for, for some people. Um, my concern is um, if somebody writes to the select board email and we all respond through that, we're going to wind up with these impossibly long chains. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to get around that. So maybe we could just, we could all have access to the select board email, but we would only respond with our personal select board email so that the whole board doesn't read it. Oh yes, I hear what you're saying. So it's not like a don't reply all idea. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Barbara, are you still my, I guess my only concern with that is that uh, if there's not clear communication over like who is supposed to be kind of going through the inbox and 
uh, or who, who is taking our particular message, um, that it, if people are just kind of sporadically checking in and out of it, um, that it could get kind of unruly to manage. Um, uh, agreed, agreed, which is why I thought maybe Barbara could be yeah. the gatekeeper. Um, Barbara, are you still there? Does that sound terribly onerous to you? Am I still alive? Here. She's asking if the idea of parsing out the emails sounds like too much work. Yeah, Ed and I actually talked about it last week, and um, I'm, I'm happy to do it any way you want to. Nothing's written in stone if, once you make a decision. It's not written in stone. We could try it one way for a week. Or two, and if it's not working, switch it. I was going to say, if you do answer a select for an email and you CC the select for an email account, everyone will go, oh, Jordan answered that email, and then not engage. Like, that might be the indication is that first reply, you do kind of reply to the whole select board as a sign of, like, hey guys, I got this. And then the rest of you would go, okay, if, if they need me, they'll come find me, kind of a thing. Because I've been trying to puzzle out how you guys are going to do this too, and I don't I haven't come up with a great <laughs> way to do it yet. Yeah, and, and I just, think it largely depends on whether or not we, we make the rest of the email addresses like listed on the website under the select board. So like if there aren't individual uh, addresses on the website, then that, that whether it's a distribution list or an inbox is going to get more heavily used because that's the, that's the public point of contact uh, for the initial whatever. And then, but if, if, if we put our contact information on there and it's just treated as a distribution list, then maybe it's not, uh, it's not something that gets as heavily used and people right. start to naturally kind of, and I, I don't have a strong opinion, I guess, about whether or not mine is on there or not on there. I, I see both sides and the, the only thing that I'll kind of throw in is that Anytime you put a, uh, an email address on a website, it can automatically get crawled by the internet, um, and and that increases the potential for spam and, and phishing. Um, so it becomes a security issue. So if you can kind of direct a lot of that towards a, a more generic point of outreach, then that that does help. Um, so I'm wondering, what if the select board at palacevermont.gov didn't go to all five of you, but it came to me and Jamie, who specifically would like to see the emails. And she could be like the select board rep who's also seen all the emails and how they're being handled. I mean, I'd like to see the emails too. I, yeah, it's been a very quiet couple of weeks and I've feel really not in, yeah, the let, so I kind of like this. Let me have a conversation with uh, uh, RV Tech uh, this week and I'll uh, figure out what what we can and can't do with distribution lists or shared inboxes. We can definitely set it up as a shared inbox uh, that just appears in each one of, uh, and it, it'll be separate. So we, we can probably do that as well. Um, I just don't know the logistics, uh, the ins and outs of it uh, to, to speak to it more specifically, but I, we, we've had a similar discussion about it. So, so in the meantime, I think Jamie needs to understand as webmaster, if she's gonna list her email address on the select board page, what do, what do each of you want done with your email addresses? Do you want them posted on the website select board page? Um, I actually don't. And I, I, I feel like no news is good news. So I'm not one that's looking for more emails. I know I'm gonna get more emails, but I get plenty of emails. Yeah, so. I, I hear you. Yeah. So, is it, did it, ha, Jamie's gonna need to figure out how to right. post some and not post the or, others. Or are we gonna decide not to post any? And they'll all get out there. Right, I, yeah. right, I mean, or, or I mean, it, you you serve multiple roles, and your email address is going to be uh, listed as webmaster, and you're also listed on the select board page as being a select board member. So, I mean, it, it doesn't say Jamie Morby's select board account. It just says Jamie Jamie Morby's uh, Callis Vermont right. gov account. So wherever you choose to publish that, you know. People can can find it. Um, 
so I think that's a that's that's an alternative as well. Um, Are your phone numbers there instead? No. We have no contact information no, on the no website. Contact. It's, it's all my been all my address to this point, oh. and now's when we need to decide if it's going to change. Yeah, we have our phone numbers on the road page. Jamie and I do. Right. That's true. Cool. And next year it'll be in the book. Yeah. On the cover. Right. It'll be what we what they decide it will be. Yeah. May <laughs> 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 not be there. <laughs> But I mean, it, it's just a public, I mean, it's a reference. When I was on the select board, I never got tons and tons of calls. And right. Generally, and I, and I got have my phone number in one front porch front post, but I've gotten plenty of calls. Like, not since I became town clerk, but while I was running. So, yeah. if people want to find it, they'll find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, do we have decision points to make or not? Or you're gonna do? You're gonna talk to RB a little bit about the Slack board email, and um, I mean, is there? I mean, do, do these? So, Anne and Jamie, if you want your emails posted, I don't really see how that's a problem, unless you just will get too many emails that the rest of us would get otherwise. I don't know. Anne Winchester, do you have a thought about that? Sorry, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm being terribly distracted. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was just... She handed me the one-year-old, and uh, she went off to pick up the other kids, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering aloud if it needs to be, uh, you know, all of us, or, you know, maybe it's just the chair, or maybe it's just the ones who want their thing out there posted, like Ann Tulin and Jamie Morby. Um, you know, as far as what we're posting for contact information on the website. Well, Anne, uh, Jay, the, question, the question is, do I think it should be a personal choice as to whether it should be on the website? Uh, yeah, I guess that is the question. So, I guess that depends on whether or not we have, how we use the group email, the, you know, the select board email. Um, uh, as long as we all have access to that so that we can pick up anything that's appropriate to us. But that would mean it's incumbent on each of us to look at them all, I guess, unless there's a gatekeeper. So, no. Jordan, are you going to want your email address on the website? Because I'm thinking if it's really just Jamie and Anne, this Anne, then yours individual, callusvermont.gov, email address could be there as select board member and road commissioner with your email address and that separates it from <clears throat> right gabrielle and jordan the more people that put their email addresses on the website people are going to figure out the pattern of what the websites right. are set up and also i think there's just kind of a general continuity and policy element to it too so yeah, like i think right. if there's if there's some there should be all there's kind of a yeah. Yeah, well, maybe we I could agree. sit on it and not. I wonder it if we can I, if we it. could just sit on it uh, for that. We can certainly put the uh, Callis Select Board at callisvermont.gov on there. It it is a good as long as somebody's checking it. It right now it's a distribution list. So. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but, exactly what that mean. But, but so that means that if someone emails to selectboard.gov, it goes to each of us and Barbara. Uh, each and every mail. So that's how it's set up right now. And it could be tweaked, but I think probably, speaking for myself, um, we might need some time to kind of figure out what we want it to Jamie, look like. It's a lot use of your personal account to email Callis I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's are it's we ready select to... board at callisvermont.gov? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Now? How about now? Now? <laughs> now? now? You're now? already now? scratching. Now? 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 Yes. 
So that when I hit reply, it goes back to the sender and nobody else. Oh, when you hit, when you Jamie hit reply from from my select board email. Uh, so reply all went, but reply all goes to select board at Calus. Right. Yeah. Uh, dot go, so so yeah. it doesn't automatically go to I, everyone. I replied just to myself. <laughs> Hold on a second. Can you see that reply? Hold on. Yes, but I'm going to do something different. <laughs> no, why would I be able to see that reply? You mean like in my scent? Right. Mm. No, it's not in my scent. So I got Jordan... What did you just do, Jordan? Yeah, what <laughs> did I do? <laughs> so it, it it would make sense it would make sense that you uh, so it's a distribution list. So I see you see the distribution list in yeah. there and now it started okay. another thread, which is the type of thing that we'd want to not avoid. Do. Right. Uh, because it's a distribution list. Um, like I said, unless you wanted to alert people, hey, I'm handling. Unless you wanted to just, yeah, um, pick up. All right, it's 10 to 9. Um, you're going to talk to RB Tech a little bit, so we'll return to this, I think. I don't think we're ready to make a decision. Fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, it's late. I'm getting tired. It is. Um, okay, do, do, do we have an update on status of Shed v. Callis? Quickie horse update. I'll keep it super tight. Um, <laughs> Method cold. He's adorable. The foster is adorable. Um, it does have medical issues that we can't do anything about at the moment because she won't give permission. Um, but it's still due unless you heard something in the last hour or two to be ending on June 1st, barring her doing the things that she is required to do. I went by her home the other day and there's nothing that's happened over there. So What's ending on June 1st? That is the day for her to complete the remedial actions. Okay. And then Which include housing and, you know, like a whole extensive setup. And then she forfeits the animals if yes. she doesn't do it. Okay. And then we can move forward. Um, and two out of the four have prospective adoptive homes. We've um, redone the legal agreements with the foster of the three horses. The other foster literally had nothing but an email and basically has just been working through the veterinarian. They're okay with that. Um, and at this point, it's like less than a month, so there's not a lot of feeling that we have to go have some binding thing, but the other family wanted all that stuff. So, um, and that's where that is. Okay. Did we update on court the last time? I feel like we did. Jordan? Um, there, yeah, there's no update on Just on that court. they had requested us to just kind of hand them over, and she would go to Woodbury, and we said no. So, um, and I did advise Woodbury to take a look at her ordinance and to consider and they're working on their own right now. But sorry, how did Woodbury get involved? So Woodbury, she has property, right? oh. property in Woodbury and previously had put the animals there. There's no, nothing to keep them there. They would leave and then cross Route 14 and be wandering up the road picking up people's other animals and they stop have, and have a parade of animals. They had up. previously been impounded having left the Woodbury by Callis having left the Woodbury property. So the, the feeling was that uh, it was not acceptable just to have a promise to, to take the animals out of Callis mm -hmm. um, and, and never return if that meant that they were going to just be in Woodbury where they would have a high probability of potentially being a problem again. So. Uh, we are sticking to the remedial actions that have been upheld by the court thus far, and there is some dialogue between uh, the lawyers, uh, but at this point we're just waiting for a June one. Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, before taking further any yeah. further action. I'm okay. suggesting anything's gonna. Come up. All right. Can we have a super quick collective bargaining team update? Uh, yeah, we had uh, our 
first round of our first negotiation meeting. Uh, so it's the first of however many we need um, uh, that are closed to the public. So we can't really discuss the details, but we have set dates for the next few uh, relative to uh, availability and schedules. Um, and we're moving through the process. So. All right. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we're not going to do procedures? any new rules. <laughs> and I'm going to make an executive decision that I'm too late to begin revising the select for rules of procedure. Because we have some that work. So, um, okay, um, motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Amen. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, do I need a roll call on that? Mm -hmm. I'll just say. I don't I think we're good. Not on a Adjourned. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bye.